it's getting very dangerous for me to walk around and even speak to people anymore. What happened? Because so many people can't get on this show. Uh-oh. I was leaving the building last week. Who'd you run into? And I ran into Kevin Sorbo, the guy who used to play Hercules. <laughs> oh, please. I was called out to the green room before he got to you. <laughs> During, and let me come in and tell you this. How we'll tell our stories together. I mean, let me ask you something, because I get this all the time. I mean, Kevin Sorbo's got to know on some level things aren't exactly hot for him right now in Hollywood. <laughs> I mean, it, it, why is it so shocking to people that they can't get booked on a show? So there's a, there's a really funny move that people like that have. So it's, yeah. it's 8.30 last Wednesday, and I've been told that Kevin's out in the outside green room, yeah. and he really wants to see me. So I go out there, and, and the move is I'd love to say hello to Howard. Oh. And I say, well, we're on air right now. And he goes, yeah, that's what I mean. I'd like to come in on the air and just say hello, uh-huh. which is meaning I want to be on the show. Yeah, people think we have nothing to do. And that was a day that we had three guests. Yeah, so I yeah. go, I go. listen, we're on Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. We're going to do two guests a day. You know, we don't get as many people on. And by the way, we, today we had three guests on. Howard yelled at me for having three guests on. So, you know, and he still, I seem, think, seemed a little disappointed that he still couldn't walk in and say hello. I mean, he's not Bob Hope. I mean, he's a nice guy, a nice guy, but he I really like wanted Kevin. to get in. Well, he you know. does have an interesting story because he wrote this book called True Strength, I think. Yeah. And it's all about how, you know, as Hercules, you know, he's like in great shape, a strong guy. He actually had an aneurysm and had three strokes oh. and almost lost his life. Because of all the working out? I don't know exactly what caused it, but, you know, the book is about his comeback. You know, like he lost, <laughs> his sight was impaired. So nobody even knew he had a comeback. He, wow. It was between seasons and, of the show. And uh-huh. he, he, he Probably said, all that working out. He said at first, I said, well, how did you deal with it? He said, I came back and we shot for like an hour a day. And then we chew for two hours a day. It was an interesting story. Listen to me, Gary. <laughs> All of that working out and putting pressure on the joints and the pressure and your head. And it's very difficult. There's too much working out. And really, it's not necessary. But, Mom, he, he played Hercules. Hercules, yeah. He had it work out all the time for Hercules. <laughs> yeah, kind of. I mean, he's supposed to be in incredible shape. Is that right? Listen, your father and I are in good shape. We walk. We go to the gym once a week. But he's overdoing it. And you're overdoing it. What do you mean? All that running around. <laughs> All of that exercise. Oh, your heel hurts. <laughs> of course, because of the pounding is very hard on the joints. Ma, I'm fine. I want to do some exercise. I sit in a chair all day. Listen, I said movement is good. Your father and I walk. Yeah, but I'm not 85 fucking years old. I can run. Oh, yeah, you think that's it? Your father never ran, and neither did I. Look, I'm not going to talk about this. You're making me cuckoo. And, and, and Kevin Sorbo absolutely had to work out hard to be Hercules. Oh, yeah? All right, look. Yeah, I'm going to go now. All right, goodbye. That's the so, lecture. So anyway, I ran into him later in the afternoon. <laughs> and I'm just seeing this guy walk by me, and I'm like, oh, that's Kevin Sorbo. And I said, Kevin, Hi. And he turned around. That was your mistake. Why'd you say hello? I know, but you see somebody, you don't know that this <laughs> intrigue has gone on. I, well, so, I, I walk, you got to see me walk out. <laughs> you walk out of here today with me. No one can even catch me. I sprint right out of this building. No one catches me. Well, I stopped to say hello, and I got the whole, I wanted to come in today, but Gary oh, wouldn't good. let me. Well, that means Gary's doing his yeah, job. Yeah, yeah, hey. Gary's the bad guy. Yeah, we I, want, uh, <laughs> Gary, why didn't you tell me Kevin Sorbo? Can, I tell, you, can I tell you the great game that I play now? It's, yeah. a, it's actually a physical game. <laughs> we pass on a guest, right? right? Then we finish the show, and I go to do the wrap-up show, and that guest is sitting in the lobby. Right. So I now have to <laughs> wait till they look the other way and run behind them. Do you really do that? I really do oh that. My God. Hey, I've done that with way, a lot of people. To, speaking of the wrap-up show, I do want to address this. I don't know if you heard it. 
Uh, chances are you did, but uh, Ronnie and Sal had a real mm. good fight on the wrap-up show. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Ronnie and Sal? Yeah, Ronnie and Sal. Like, Sal took some low blows to Ronnie about his marriage breaking up. And, uh, really? It, 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 start, it started yeah, out with... it was outrageous. It started out with who would go Skippy on Howard on the show. That's what the conversation started out. So right. then Sal's name came up, and then Sal got mad at Ronnie for because Ronnie said, well, Sal's crazy. He could do that. And Sal went right at him. Mm. You are nuts, Sal. Do you know why? Why? Because once you make a statement like you make, all your stupid statements, yeah. and you say, well, I don't mean that now, once you make that statement, you can never take that statement back. What, are you a shrink? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't take that back. I, all I'm not crazy taking things I'm that not you taking take, it. I'm not taking anything things, back. No, you say you've improved. You didn't improve. Sure, it's people all there, change. Dude. People You're change. Also, You're still fucking nuts. Have you not changed? None of that shit Have goes away. Have you not away. changed? You're a normal same man married with a, to a nice woman with kids, oh, and now you're out. You're, you're, old, that? you're this old you wacky want? elf in strip clubs every night. What is that? You fucking changed. <laughs> you went fucking nuts. Look at you. You look like a four-year-old with a mustache on for Halloween. You're I'm a little sorry, fucking you're so loud of my wacky, now. grouchy idiot who parades around in strip clubs. You had a I nice family, which I would consider clubs, to be dude. normal. You, you can't gotta, wait. You know? Wait a minute. Who's the guy who can't wait to get to the strip club tonight? <laughs> well, tonight Who's is a guy? special event. Huh? Who's At the risk? guy who can't wait I'm, to get there? I'm mar- but I'm still. I still have. I still have my sanity. I'm still. I'm no, still you pro- don't. Yes, I you're do. Not happy. That's something very no, you're happy. Not happy. I'm extremely no, happy, you're not. You Don't asshole. go down my road where what I did. Your road is At busted and old. If, if I wasn't happy, I'd Your left. road is decrepit. Okay? You have a dirt road going you're to nowhere. You're a stupid ass. You hang you're out. You're not happy. You're a road where you're fucking down south drive up chicks and fuck them and cut their head off. You what have no road. What are you talking about? Your road is a demented, Why dark would you even shit hole. When did I, would I ever say something like that? You're not. Look at this demented shit that you come out what with. What demented shit have I come out with? you got to worry about you. What demented shit have I come out with? You're fucking nuts. You really are. I'm not nuts. I'm not nuts <laughs> i mean you make statements like you make man that's fucking nuts i, I would never say shit like that oh, because i asked my boss five years ago if i could sleep guess what i when i worked in wall street Who i could have asked my boss would to ask stay their over. boss to sleep but, in the but, house but well, well, he, he's, got, he's got this I fucking size of the ha- a a house of, of a fucking mall you think there'd be a little room for one of his ploys for one guy Listen, there not, let me, not, let me tell you no, i'm back. asking me let why? me tell you something how oh, often stop, do let me sleep in his house a million times when we've had bad weather okay there but, you go. So you just proved my point. He let you but sleep he over. he offered. He, I didn't ask him. Okay, well, that would... Why would so you what? even think of asking him? Because I was him. confident enough as a friend to ask him because I was in right. the city. That doesn't make me crazy. To ask somebody who you You're consider a friend, a friend to sleep his. over I'm is not, not crazy. I, I wouldn't even do I'm with him way longer than you. I would never think of asking him, hey, Howard, can I sleep in your house tonight? Well, that's <laughs> you. Are you a fucking that's whack you. job? I'm telling you, you are a whack job. I'm not a whack job for <laughs> He's that. right. By the way, we, we were talking to Sal about you know how he would be the one to go skipping. And he's like, I'm not. I'm you know, perfectly normal. So we brought up the sleeping thing. And he goes, that was a long time ago. I get it now. But in that clip, you could see he doesn't get it because no, he, he clearly doesn't. thinks you were wrong to not let him sleep over. Yeah, like I have a big enough apartment that I should let him just sleep over. In the meantime, there, was a, there are a lot of people who he really was friendlier with that right. had apartments in the city that he could have asked Will. Right. He could have asked a lot of other people. No, he would be more comfortable at my place. Of course yeah. he You would. have the room. Yeah. Right. You practically owe it to him. You wouldn't even know he was there. People make big transitions in their life. They're capable of doing it, and you, that's what I did. You, that was a point you made, but you 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 made you it, it sound like what he did way, was bad man. and and, and well, evil I'm sorry, for doing it. I didn't it. mean it that way. The, the that's exactly I'm, what you meant. But it's a big transition to go that, from a family to a, a wild swinging old fart at a strip club. That's a big transition. Dude, I'm not a, a swinging old fart at a strip club. I don't live there. I don't know where you get this. Well, idea the point from. I'm trying to make is that you said I, don't, I work for them. You, I do appearance for them. I, I go there. You do a great job. I'm not there all the time. You're very good. Very good. Goddamn fucking night. No. You're out of your mind. Ronnie, the point I'm trying to make you is that you said, you said I don't have the ability to change. You change and you're going and you're doing fine. So I changed. How do you know as well. I'm doing fine? I might not be doing fine. I might have <laughs> And you didn't say you're doing fine at all. A great show well, for everybody. Maybe said, I'm not doing he fine. He says he's are happy all the time. You painted him as the opposite right, you know of what? fine. You change and you're not doing fine. I changed and I am doing fine. No, you're not doing fine. I'm doing fine. You're not doing because fine. Because your thoughts came out to him about how you felt. My going thoughts. back a long time ago. Big deal. No, big, it is a big deal because guys, you can't take back what you've said. I'm not. Boy, when those guys argue, it goes on and on and on. Jesus. I'm getting a little woozy from it. I love in the first clip how Sal used the word demented and then Ronnie thought it was a good word too. And he so they said both, demented. So they both sort of go back and forth with demented. I was surprised it's either the one of them. Argument. I was surprised either one of them knew the word demented. Can they I think it? they just knew it sounded cool. Yeah. Wow. 
Sal going in there with the marriage stuff and the whole thing. I think that Robin Salem opened up uh, a door and now yeah. everybody's rushing mm. through it. Yeah, yeah. She kind of like, she led the way. Now it's Ronnie's there whole thing. There was a thing. breach. Yeah, there was a breach. No one was, was really bringing no that one up. was touching it. Ooh, we. Salvatore. Yes. Seemed like the argument you had with Ronnie recently right. was was rather deep rooted. The fact that you went right for the jugular, you really attacked. First of all, there is no jugular left in that guy. There's no jugular. There's nothing there. I mean, it's like picking up a cadaver. There's no jugular. I mean, Sal, Sal can't ruffle my feathers. I can say plenty about him, but I don't. There's plenty more I could let out there, you know, and I'm sure that he thinks there's plenty more he could let out on me. But you know what? I got plenty up on him. Is Ronnie delusional? Do you think that he doesn't, he isn't able to step outside and realize how much he has changed and how much? Well, Ronnie called me out for not changing. Once you say something, that's it. You can't change. Apparently, he has changed. So, he is delusional. If he's telling me that I can't change, yet he's a man who changed, who's the one that sounds like a stupid asshole? I, I'd have to, I have to say he does, but... Right. You are, have to say who, Greg? The man behind the camera? Ronnie. Well, there you go. And you represent the audience. Because right now, I'm looking at the audience. Exactly. An audience, who's the stupid asshole? Ronnie. There you go. He's a little bit of an idiot, and I told him that to his face, and then I'll tell him whatever I want to to his face. I'm not afraid to tell him anything. I'm not or saying, you. I'm not saying you're, you're afraid. You're a pain in the fucking ass, too. I know I'm a pain in the ass, but Just that's so my know. job. That's fine. But, but I have no ill feelings towards you. We get along fine, don't we? we? We get along swimmingly. Okay, swimmingly. I like that. But you and Sal, the fact that... You were ready to open up these wounds. You are ready to go for go for the jugular. Well, he started it, dude. Right, but normally if you have an argument with someone that you like, you don't go instantly to such to, well, and use such harsh I'm, words. I'm, you got the wrong person, man. I'm not going to stand there. You're going to stand there and attack me. You think I'm going to stand there and take it without shooting back my gun, taking out my gun and shooting you? I'm just talking about how venomous the argument became. Speaks hey. to the fact that maybe there was a beef between you and Sal prior It started out as a talk about him being a little a little off the wall for trying to sleep in Howard's house. That's how it started off. Then we went to how I how I left my wife and I'm living in a strip club and all this kind of bullshit. Where, where, does that, where do you translate that to? That's not going for the jugular. I didn't say anything like that to him. I could have said plenty, and I didn't. He was being honest, and I was being honest. But overall, I like Ronnie, and Ronnie, I, I, I tend to believe Ronnie likes me. He probably won't admit it, but we get along. You know, we're just, I wouldn't even say ball breaking. I think he was trying to give me a dose of tough love, but it doesn't work with him. You know, he, he, he's the last person on earth that you want to get advice from. You're not gonna. You're not gonna take sanity advice from a guy who wears tinted glasses indoors. No, and uh, skin tight belly shirts and turtlenecks and you know a man who dyes his beard and wears skull and crossbone t-shirts on the weekends at the age of 62 years old. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Pretty and and likes a vibrator rubbed against his asshole. You know that. You know and has dreams about sucking dick and getting fucked with a pussy. That's, yeah. You know what? Come to think of it, I will take sanity advice from him. <laughs> you can't take it back. It's coming from a guy who says, Last night I dreamt that I had a pussy and a man was fucking me. And he's talking about me taking back shit? If I had a dream like that, the last thing I would do is say it on a show that it's 20 million listeners, you stupid jerk off. God. Case closed. Captain Sanity. You're looking at it. Yes, Vince. Then we'll get right to um, the news. Yeah, Vince. Hey, you know, I was watching an old episode of, uh, this is a question for all you guys. I was watching an old episode of uh, To Catch a Predator. And I was just wondering, if you guys had a relative, whether it be a son or, 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 or a father or anything that got caught in one of those things, oh, how would you handle it? Would you disown him? Would you not talk to him? Like, what would you do? If my son was a child molester... Well, if he was if he was going online and meeting, I would never abandon uh, any of my children. You know, but but I what guess, do you do? I mean, I think at this point you just well, if you know he's a child molester, you you have him locked up because he's going to ruin some kid. But you you have to right? You can't protect the child molester under any what any if it's an uncle, a cousin? Can't protect him. Got to report him. But you know, do you have him to family events? 
<laughs> Are the kids there? Oh. You gotta. Oh, it's all adult no. events. I don't know. Like if your if your son. See, these are sticky issues. If your son's a child molester, do you have him to family <laughs> events? Well, hopefully he, you've reported him to the authorities, and he's not available for family events. You, well, you know they the do out. get out eventually, Howard. They don't lock these people up for life. Oh. Well, I guess, well, I like yeah, I guess I'd have to have him at family events, but I have to ha- sign, put, say, hey, everyone, listen. He has to wear a scarlet letter. My boy's a child molester. I love him because he's my son, but at the same point, he's fucked up. But, so, you know, enter at your own risk. See, that's a problem. I, on the show, so many people come through, and then they say that they were molested by somebody, and then you say, oh, do you ever see him again? They say, yeah, I see him every year at Christmas. Yeah, right. We exchange gifts. It's I don't so know. uncomfortable. Doesn't make sense. You Look, I grew well, like- up with my molester. Yeah, I mean, right. Robin, so, I mean, but Robin couldn't get, you needed a father. I mean, <laughs> not that you needed a father. How do you get your father out of the house when you're a little kid? You can't. That's right. I mean, that's a different situation. I like He's asking if your dad found out you were the child molester. What do you do? But how well, to- you know what? I was looking that last week I did that story about the guy they arrested and he had porn on his phone and his zipper was down and they thought he was one of the guys molesting yeah. um, women in Queens and Brooklyn. And it turns out that they had to let him go after the story broke. But he was still out there in the middle of the night with his zipper down and porn on his phone. But he was just doing it by himself. He wasn't harming anyone. <laughs> so I want to know what guy. How do you treat him at Thanksgiving? I want to know what guy doesn't have porn on his phone. Yeah, but you're not outside. Give your dick out of your zipper outside. Oh, well, that's tough. That's when you know something's but, wrong. But, but so the point is, okay, say you have a son and your son's a child molester. Right. And he's been convicted. Right. Done his jail time. Right. But in your mind, you 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 know you know he did it once, and so now you have family gatherings where there's kids there. Are what do you do? I think you say to him, "Hey, son." You are a child molester. I can't have you around children. And, I, and, and evidently, you don't know how to conduct yourself with proper behavior. But I'm cured. And so we can't. There's no cure. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I, I can't trust you in those situations. Sometimes your kids can't be part of everything. It's a tough thing to say, but you got to say it. <laughs> you can't it. meet your cousin or right. your uncle. <laughs> your cousin's a very hot five-year-old. <laughs> You can't, what are you going to say? Oh, if this happens one more time, uh, you're in big hot water with me. No, you got to say, listen, you broke the trust and you can't be at family gatherings and it's not going to change. And if the kid can't handle it, tough shit. That's the consequence. Go ahead, Pat. You have the last word. Yeah, Howard. Yeah. Oh, I want to ask Robin if, on her free time. Does she ever uh, go out to the bars or the clubs in New York? No. Sure she does. She's lying. <laughs> Why would you? Why would you say no? I don't do it on a regular basis. Yes, if you ever go to bars and clubs to meet guys, you do. You have a, a, a pack of gals you go with, and you. And but you, I haven't done that in a long time. Maybe why I've you turned embarrassed? over a new leaf. Why? I don't know. I just, I just haven't done it. Why did you lie to him? <laughs> I, that's not like you. <laughs> did the guy sit it on just her? seemed like the right answer at this moment. No. Did that's the guy not... sit on her when she's out there? Sure, they do. I mean, she is attractive. When you go on YouTube, they show pictures throughout the years of Robin. I don't particularly care for her in a WOR days, <laughs> but she cut her hair. You mean WNBC short. days? No, no WOR. WOR on the shows. Oh, she I mean, looked she cut lovely. Her hair too short, but as she got older, I like that look with that short little afro, the, the flat top. <laughs> that was one of my favorites. I thought well, that was. I loved your hair like that. Well, She'd wear dark glasses and a flat top and big titties. Come on. Well, she was heavier set then back then, now, and now she's a lot thinner. And she's, she's 56 years old now and more attractive. I'm much older than that. She's no hag. <laughs> no, she, the, the thing that saves Robin is she doesn't look her age. Yeah, absolutely. Most black people don't. That's they, not they, true. I've seen some terrible-looking black people <laughs> who have aged horribly. <laughs> wow. I'm not going to mention their names. But... Well, Robin, and and I don't know that she uh, is aware of this. She looks in her thirties now. She's lucky, and any guy listening should realize that. Well, that's why I'm, I'm wondering. You know, when she goes out, that the guys don't hit sure. her. I mean, what is she attracted to? I know she was with. Mr. Well, X she's for a long she time. is open to a lot of different kind of guys. Well, let's say she was and at she the goes bar. out and she's friendly and she dances with these guys. She told me what she does. <laughs> she's a bit embarrassed right now about it, but I'm not sure she goes out. She dances around. She doesn't particularly like dancing, but she tries. I need a cock. Okay, <laughs> there's no well, shame in that, Robin. I need a cock. Now you're opening up. So I'm not embarrassed. Right. <laughs> I need a cock.
Well, Who doesn't? Like, like when she's at her uh, her apartment building, I mean, and she's in the elevator, don't guys hit on her then? I mean, guys have to hit on you, Robin. Sure, it happens. Why? What's the big deal? Well, I've been there I'm when just, guys hit on her. I I'm walked down the street with her one time, to. and this guy, I believe he was a parking lot attendant, <laughs> he started coming on to her and saying things in front of me. Now, for all he knew, I could have been her boyfriend. Well, and he could care less. Well, you guys been around for 30 years. Everybody knows you ain't her boyfriend. Howard, well, but... I don't think this guy was aware well, of anything. Well, this guy didn't know who anybody was. No, I don't think he knew Robin. I don't think he knew me. This was years ago. But, uh, hey, Robin, are you attracted to uh, just black guys, or are you attracted to white guys? Or... No, she goes all, all the ways. I need a cock. I'm attracted <laughs> to really wonderful people. She's attracted well, to anybody. Not. I mean, you haven't been involved with anybody for years. And you, what, did you go eight years without sex? <laughs> Uh, Robin, has a total stranger ever hit on you and it worked out? I t well, the guy in ca in the the guy in the the book in the um, San Francisco. San Francisco, yeah. Right. Right. Oh, the guy who she had anal with the, yeah. po the poop shoot guy. I didn't want to say that. But well. First of all, I thought that guy was weird because who like meets someone and the first thing they do is fuck her in the ass. Like, for, I mean, that's he didn't just insane. Want to get me pregnant. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's he didn't insane. Know me. He just figured, you know what? Let's not take a chance. Like, you know, he, he looked over Robin. He goes, "Well, you know what? Let's skip your vagina." I say that guy was maybe gay because that guy's what was it nuts. About him? He, did he did he dress well or was like he super attractive? Who knew what he was dressed like? I met him that night. Yeah, but what did, what attracted you to him? I don't know. It was a chemistry thing, I guess. Theo, go ahead. You're on the air. Yeah, you were talking about uh, family members that do weird things. Once during like a Christmas dinner, I had an uncle who was talking about how hot the uh, other aunts were. And he said, oh, I'd bang her. And he leaned back, adjusted himself on the couch a little bit, stretched out, and blew a load in his pants. Now, wow. when you're a kid, seven, eight years old, what do you do? He blew a load in his pants at, the, at Christmas? Talking about the ants. Talking about the ants. And he blew his load spontaneously without touching himself? No, he reached in his pants, adjusted a little bit, and stretched out a little bit, and all the other uncles are sitting in the living room watching. And how do you know he oh, blew his know. load? Yeah, dropping loads. Uh, it was, uh, was that? You got a funny look in your face, no. he got up and cleaned himself up, and it. Uh, what are you doing when you're a little kid? That's, you know what I mean? That's, you know, I never heard of such a thing. I don't know what you do when you're a little kid. You, you go to your room and hide. Hello, Robin. Yes, hello. May I talk to you for a minute? Certainly. What is it? Well, I wanted to talk to you about your um, non... I was going to say your clubbing ways, but really your, <laughs> your non-clubbing ways. So... I occasionally go to a club, but not enough to say I'm a club girl. What is it about going out to bars and clubs and being hit on that's such a turnoff for, for most women, actually? Well, it's just that you don't think anybody really serious or that you should bring home would be in a club hitting on you. I don't know why, but that's generally the the rationale. It's like, this is just for fun, and you know, you don't think, no, that you should bring that guy home. Because it's such a party atmosphere, there's booze, there's loud music. Right, and this is what they do. You know, they're here all the time looking for women. So how does one pick up Robin Quivers. What's the what's the me what's the method? Oh, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, I know, but I'm talking about the general public. I mean, I'm an exception, obviously. How does one pick up Robin Quivers? Um, how do I know? Um, it just happens, you know. Something happens. You have to either develop a relationship somehow, if you, you know, constantly put yourself in my way, or. You know, you have to have some kind of a, a way of getting to me. I don't know. How would I be able to answer that question? Well, if one were to bump in you in the street and they, and they wanted to make a play for you, what would be the, what's the only chance they have? Because it's obviously not going to work at a bar or a club. What's the only chance they have? How can they become like that uh, legendary San Francisco man? <laughs> <laughs> obviously, I would have to be in the mood. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It is a two-way street here. Um, I, I can only tell you the people who've been unsuccessful. There was one guy who walked up to me one day and he gave me his card and he said, I'm the right man for you. You don't know it yet, but I'm the right man for you. And I certainly never called him. <laughs> <laughs> so business cards are out. No, not business cards. It was just like, why would you say that to me? I'm the right man for you. And why would I just take your card? You're some guy walking down the street.
You know, that seems odd. So you'd like a little bit of uh, a little bit of a clever move, not something shticky like that, but just are you saying be yourself? Yeah, I think that's what you have to do. You have to have some self-confidence. You know, the the usual things that people say. Let yourself shine through. Yeah. And and it may just lead to a date with Right. With yeah, it could. Who knows? Should we do the Paris notes first? Yeah, probably. All right, but, all right, but don't lose it. I won't, I won't. There's some good stuff in these notes, actually. Uh, wrote a children's book. That's what he's promoting today. The boy with pink hair. In 2010, he went on Ellen DeGeneres and said he was going to stop bullying celebrities on his website. This is part of this campaign to end high school bullying. Uh, so now he says he describes himself as more sassy than hurtful and nasty. He apologized to several... Uh, 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 Celebrities on Twitter, including Demi Moore, he apologized for calling her daughter a potato head. <laughs> <laughs> he used to be funny. Hello. What's up, Perez? Good morning. How are you today? I am very well. I feel like it's been far too long since I've been on Howard. Yes, it has been a long time. How long has it been? Like a year and a half, two years? Probably too long. Too long. That's far too long. Just this way, sir. You look different. Oh, thanks. You're very fit. Oh, I've been working hard at it. You know, I was in New York in September because I have a new children's book out. But a few people told me I shouldn't come do Howard to talk about my children's book. But you know what? Fuck that. I totally should come and do Howard and talk about my children's book, amongst other things. Because I he love has, Howard. I mean, he has listeners with kids. I mean, yeah, I love Howard. So I'm very happy to be here. So it's called The Boy with Pink Hair. I've the Boy with Pink Hair. Although it's research. been a while since I've had pink hair. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to butch it up now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so a lot has changed. I mean, you're in you're in better shape than the last time. Yes. I know you're, you've sort of revamped your site. You've expanded your site. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm working hard on many different things and... Um, having fun along the way but still working hard that's the key so I still wake up really early and um, I love what I do so I'm really lucky I'm lucky I get to come and do Howard and he doesn't say no when we reach out to him because <laughs> I'd imagine sometimes that happens like oh that loser I don't want to talk to him again <laughs> no you're in Howard's good graces it seems yay <laughs> alright Perez have fun today man thank you all right, Perez Hilton uh, has a very popular website and now has expanded to five different websites. He actually has five different Perez Hilton websites. Oh, yeah? Let's see, Perez, he looks good, he lost a lot of weight. Hey there. Feeling good. How, how are you, Perez? I'm very happy to be back. Yeah, happy to have you. You know, I was in New York in September because I have a new children's book that came out. And some people said, you shouldn't go do Stern <laughs> talking For about your children's, children's book. book. Why? That what, ask, what, I, I have children. I know you'd have to ask them, but I was like, you know, I I'm adamant. I have to go do Howard. What a change in you! And my theory with you is like, you know, you got some money, you got some success, you stopped being angry, you went into therapy, and like you're a whole different dude now. Like you're you're accepted by you know 
Hollywood. I wouldn't say I'm accepted by Hollywood. Maybe I'm tolerated <laughs> or not even tolerated. Yeah, but I mean, a lot of, you know, I mean, first of all, Hollywood uses your website. They now advertise on there. Yeah. They they certainly make use of all of your millions of fans and everything. And now, like, and now, now you won't even, like, say nasty things about celebrities. I remember once having a whole discussion with you about, because you called, like, you know, like, I don't know, one of Demi, Demi Moore's kids, a potato head or yes, something. Yes, then, back like, then. Yeah, and, and you've had a whole change now. Yeah, uh, you know. Do you think you're completely no sweet now? I, my, it's weird. My, <laughs> what I've put out there is I think it's important for me to still be critical and have an opinion. For example, people think when I don't agree with everything they think that I'm being mean and bullying. Like Britney Spears came out with her new music video this week, and I said... I thought it was kind of distracting slash creepy that she put her real life boyfriend as her love interest in right. the music video and they're naked and having sex in it. <laughs> that is creepy. And that it was smart that, that she didn't have full on choreography in the video because the videos where she's been doing the dancing for this album haven't been that good. Right. And people are like, oh, you're bullying Britney. You're being mean. I'm like, no, I'm having an opinion. Don't you think, though, that again, I, I am one of those people who say, don't be mean to Britney because she's so fragile. I'm not. I could still, you know, I think you're it's being a, you're being crazy. Critical in the way Simon Cowell would be critical yeah. on uh, one of those shows. I think but, it's important for me to still have an opinion and yeah. do my job, but do it in a way that's not mean or nasty. Well, you came out against bullying, and now you're in this weird position that no matter what you say, you're going to be a bully. Not if you, you know, it's like it's simple things like, you know, not giving people nasty nicknames or drawing dicks on photos anymore. <laughs> but that was fun. I mean, I have to admit. It was. It, yeah, it, some it, of that was for, just kind of cute. The day, yeah. Drawing a cock in some dude's <laughs> mouth because is like he's being an asshole uh, is a, a funny thing. Or at one time he did that to Artie, I think. And it was just a thing. <laughs> you gave Artie a cock in the mouth? Yeah, I might have given him in the butt, too. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Do you miss being... A no, I don't scumbag. miss it. I don't, you don't miss it because when I started blogging, I was 26 years old. I'm right. 33 now. And you were angry. And, and people grow a lot, but especially, I think, between the ages of 26 and 33. You know, you, you're still a Your kid at 26, and yeah. now, now I'm not a kid anymore. Did things start to change when you said, hey, you know, okay, now I've made some money and this and that, and like now I'm not as hungry as I used to be? I was oh, I'm just still the, hungry. Right. I'm super hungry. You are. Well, you got five websites. Yes. What, Oh, now, are they all successful, all five? I like to think so. They're different audiences. I have the main website, PerezHilton.com. I have one that uh, is just about fashion called CocoPerez.com. I have one inspired by my weight loss journey called FitPerez.com. But I also post photos of hot chicks in bikinis and shirtless dudes because that's inspiring to me to right. watch like a hot dude in a, in, you know, in a bathing suit or a girl in a bikini. I have one uh, that uh, is inspired by my love of animals called TeddyHilton.com. That's my dog's name. So if you get a hold of a picture of a hot celebrity who's let themselves go and they got a lot of cellulite on their ass, you will not circle their cellulite and make fun no, of it? No, but I'll... Uh, and on the, See, on like the flip side, yeah. but I'll post the photo and be like, oh, look at so-and-so. Might be a good idea <laughs> if he maybe was a little more active. Try to it's inspire not healthy. Them. Yes. Right, right. And on the flip side, I, I posted a photo of Demi Moore in New York City the other night. Did you see that? No. Oh, she's looking really painfully thin gaunt yeah to the point where it's 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 clearly obvious that she's going through something big well you know about sad. all this what is going on with us i know those two and uh what what happened what happened well, what is the real the deal week, you know what is going on are they breaking up are they getting a divorce I, I it's all signs are pointing towards that you know earlier in the week or over the weekend there were movers spotted at their house so they may not be living together anymore right okay, now yeah. Demi has been spotted with uh, consulting a lawyer divorce attorneys they've also been going to marriage therapy right. so they're trying to make it work you know to me the worst part of the whole Demi and Ashton thing is not that he cheated that happens that's to be expected the worst for me is that he didn't use a condom. Well, I said that the other day, that this girl claims that he had unprotected sex. It was never even an issue for him. I know. It's... I don't get the whole unprotected sex thing at all. Because not uh, only... In any, in any situation. I know tons of guys who don't use rubbers, and they just randomly go out. You know, they're not exactly, like, hooking up with the love of their life. Yeah. And they're not vetting these people. They're not no. saying, who have you been with? He never with? met her before. Yeah. He could you always get wear a rubber when you fuck some dude? Yeah. You or, well, I don't do that 
act that often. Oh, you take it in the ass. No. <laughs> no, <laughs> meaning cool. like mo- for, for a first time, it's just like oral Suck each usually. other off. What do you and do for, for that, that? I don't use a condom, no. no. You could probably get some herpes, but... Well, you know, what thankfully I haven't. <laughs> but you suck a lot you of could. No, I don't. Get, I don't. I want to. I got a. I got an iPhone last week. Yeah. Because I used to be BlackBerry only. Right. And there's this app on iPhone called Grinder. Oh, you hadn't. I got that Grinder. Before. No. Um, and I, <laughs> I pitch Mike. I think is on Grinder, isn't he? I don't know, I don't but know. that's the one and that'll I've, tell you yes. where a gay person is within, you know, certain yes. inches of it's, you. It's, it's geo targeting where you are and what other gay dudes are near you. You're on Grinder. Yes. My headline is yes. It's really me. <laughs> <laughs> and and I had not used it before my trip to New York ever. So it's like wow, a whole new world the possibility and I used it my first day here and it worked so and you I mean, met somebody you went on Grindr yes. and you said look I need a blowjob no 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 you don't but do that the good thing about Grindr is although I would say it's mainly about hooking up not everybody on there is for hooking up so I could just theoretically be there wanting to like be friendly <laughs> <laughs> yeah right uh, but I was out at some bars and and I said well you know in those situations where I'm at a bar gay dudes often don't come up to me because they either still think of me as that douchebag Perez or they might be intimidated or they're just not into me right so I figured well this might help yeah Right. And it did. So I was on there, and somebody messaged me, and was like, oh, I'm at this bar. Come over, and let's have a drink. Was the guy handsome? Very. Yeah. Very. Like, well, like they he, can too, exchange I'm pictures, I'm still too. shocked. He's too handsome. Like, he's a, he's like, what, I was like, what do you do? He's like, well, I just graduated from architecture school, but I want to become a model. I'm like, you could, you could be a model. I was like, I scored a model. I still <laughs> like, am in disbelief. So you went to the bar, and like, there's no dicking around. He wants to have sex. You do, too. Well, I wasn't, I wasn't Did you take sure. him back to your room? He, he knew who I was, right. so I wasn't sure what he wanted. He may, he may just wanted to say hello, but we didn't, and he seemed really normal and nice. And yeah, and then after a while, we went you back to You took him to back to the room? room. Yeah, You yeah, made yeah. out with him first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what, he started sucking your dick? Yeah, yeah. Nice, good, good for you, pal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I have a friend who goes on there, and he has, he has cuddle dates. Cuddle you know, dates. like He just wants to get to know people, but you know, he'd like some skin contact, and they just cuddle and spoon on them. Who had the bigger cuddle? You were this dude. <laughs> Me. Do you ever have a sword fight with any of these dudes? Like sword a, you fight? You know, like you take your cock and you make, you make like a like a sword. Why would anybody do that? Because uh, you're I doing, think, you know, yeah, if you're in a relationship, two dudes, why not? Maybe that's a you're playful just, thing really? you could do. You, I would go on guard. That's slightly more playful than sexual, I think. Yeah, maybe that's So you it. do that in a relationship. But I've been going to see a ton of Broadway musicals, and I put it on during the show, hoping that I'll find a hot Broadway boy <laughs> who might be using it, too. <laughs> it only worked the first night, but I still, I'm still i on it right now, actually. You can is, he, it, is he my, still in your room? The guy? No, no, no. Will you see him again, or is it just like we that? have plans to hang out again? Yeah. Uh, again, look at that. Hey, grinder repeats. Well, hey man, you're the yeah, internet grinder's guy. Grinder's been out there a while. That's yeah. right. I mean, the internet has shaped your life like unbelievably. You think about I, it. You were some guy blogging I in your know. home, and you're like all of a sudden. I still am in disbelief websites. because I feel like I've tricked the world into thinking I'm somebody that matters, or the fact that I've even been able to achieve like Z-list fame by talking about famous. people people do you think it's funny to me are you one of those guys that sees doom and gloom like do you think it could end at any time Oh, absolutely that's why i'm super cheap right and save all my money don't spend on anything right uh except my i treat my mom really well it's my mom's birthday tomorrow actually so if she's listening happy early birthday mom i'm sending her to panama for her birthday do all gay guys just love treat? No. do all gay guys no. just love their moms <laughs> no but but my mom's really been there for me. Right. Especially, I haven't really talked about it that much, but there was a point in 2005 where I was very depressed. Right. And suicidal. Mm. And I never felt that way ever before in my life. I thought I was going crazy because I was having suicidal thoughts. I was like, why am I thinking these things? I was in a job that I hated. And my mom really was the only person that I could turn to because... She, she, I mean, she didn't have to be there for me, but she's my mom. It's a different kind of relationship than just friends. Right. Because after a while, your friends are like, I don't want to hear you talk about how much you hate your job and how miserable you are. What did your mom say to you that helped you? She was just there for me. She didn't actually say the group very profound, uh, profound things because she actually said things that were counter to my being. Meaning, I'd tell her, Mom, I hate this job so much. And she'd be like, Mijo, that's why they call it work. They don't call it happy. 
Right. <laughs> but for me, I could not. See, that wrap, would annoy me. I couldn't. I, it did. I couldn't right. wrap my brain around that. I'm like, Mom, I can't fathom going through life hating what I do for a living. Right. Because life is too short. I need to actually like what I do. Right. So that's why I still wake up at 5:30 in the morning. I. Still Still work 16 hours a day, and I do it without complaining because I love what I do. Because you got to do what you love. Yeah, and I know that that's pretty rare. Yeah, I mean, and, one of the things, and, and all kidding aside, even with my, you know, I was a five-year-old who wanted to be on the radio. So I never, this is my dream come true, being on the radio. It's awesome. So when people used to come at me and say, oh, you should be on TV, you should be doing, I said, no, this is my dream come true, and being on you, the radio. You know, this is, I've been having a lot of conversations about Oprah recently and her new network own. And yeah, what do you make of that whole thing? I, this is, in, in relation to you, I was going to ask, have you thought about retiring or do you want to be doing this forever? I want to, uh, we, we are now on three days a week. And uh, that's good because it gives me contact with my fans. We get to do a bunch of hours of shows that uh, I really enjoy doing. It's it's actually revitalized me because oh. it makes it it makes it more fun. I have I am able to pursue other things, and yet I come here and I come here, you know, anxious to be here. Good. I'm ready to work. You I know? love that. Yeah. You see, I, think I, I mean, I don't know mistake. that I'll do this forever. I mean, at the end of a couple of years from now, when my contract's up, I'll evaluate it again. I'll sit down with Robin, Fred, and, and probably not Benji, but oh. but uh, I'll sit down <laughs> with those two and uh, and discuss it. That's all. I think it was a big mistake for Oprah to have left her show. Yes, of course. You know what it is? She's not interested in working anymore. This She's is my so take. much money. She's got so much money. She's, well, then she could have just gone away. She can't say Why no to... Why did she start a network because, because, I think, bigger because she thought it was going to be easy. She thought yeah. she was going to slap her name on it. All her minions were going to come watch whatever crap she put on there. And that she'd hire some general manager it's, to run the thing. I'm hearing that... And you know... From running PerezHilton.com. You can't let yeah. it go. You're there. You, you don't oh, have, I'm a you, control freak. I, if, if you're not there, the ship doesn't uh, sail as smoothly. Right. It, the, the product isn't going to be as good. No. Yeah, have you gotten offers to sell PerezHilton.com? No, but I would. My dream, I would. Would you sell it off? I, with control? With, no, or my what? dream now, and this is only a, a recent uh, cool. revelation that I've had, is I don't necessarily want to sell the site. I want to partner with someone. Maybe like a Howard Stern. No, I'm kidding. Well, let me hear the proposal. I, I want to partner with a big, a big entity right. that will also help me uh, figure out a TV component. Not because I'm unhappy doing what I do. I will always blog. I genuinely, like you love doing radio. I love what I do, but I want to do more. Does it fascinate you that Harvey Levin and TMZ, TMZ created yeah. a brand on television? No, I think, it, I mean, I started before TMZ. That's I was what I'm saying. For a whole year before they were. I, I, I think great. I don't compare myself to them because I... No, I'm saying, why don't you oh, do I would something to, like that? Well, he's affiliated with a big brand. I right? They were affiliated with America Online and Warner Brothers, Telepictures. Right. Uh, so th it was a natural launching point for them. They actually started the, the website with the intention of turning it into a TV show. I see. I started blogging as a hobby and it kind of became this thing. So I would love to what do, do you think? What do, do you multiple think? TV shows? Like, I want to get my my mogul on me, like Perez Hilton presents. Well, maybe what? you should take over the Oprah Network. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you got some good ideas. You Go got talk some to I think my brand doesn't match with her. <laughs> so, do you think Oprah was just kind of tired and grabbed at this thing and is not really getting it off the ground? I think I don't know if it's tired because she was not working that hard right. on her show towards the end. Anyways, I just think in her mind, and you know, 25 years, it was a good number to wrap her brain around. Right. But I would have just kept going because of course. Well, part of what I love about Oprah, I am an otheist. I, I am a minion, <laughs> as you said. You like You're Oprah. I the, love Oprah. The, yeah. I feel that she genuinely wants to try and make the world a better place. And she has and she is, right. in my opinion. Yes. Uh, but I, I think she could have been more effective in doing that, having stayed on her show. And she could have maybe had fill-in hosts and doing more things like that and reached more people than now with 
own, which is failing dramatically. Yeah, I think and he, Rosie's failing. Yeah. And, and can, oh my gosh, it's a complete side note. Yes. I don't even know how relevant it is to a lot of your listeners, but I'm Cuban and gay from Miami, and I worship Gloria Stefan. Yes. And your interview with her was, <laughs> I think, the best interview she has ever ever done well, in her you. whole life. And I watch and listen to everything Gloria does. I was listening to that. I was like, oh my God, what is how, how what Gloria, what? And then Emilio came and I'm like, what? Oh my God. A lot of sexual activity going on. I just was, sh- I mean, it was, but not even that, like the, the conversations you were having with her about her father and all this stuff was, yeah. as a real fan, it was so enlightening. And I, I, I mean, I'm not saying this to kiss your ass. I worship you because Thank you. you have such an amazing way of getting people to talk about things, not just the sexual things. It's like, I, I want to be Howard Stern. <laughs> You're so awesome. Trust me, it isn't that much fun. <laughs> oh, I'm With, sure uh, it is. Oprah getting back to her for a second, I think she missed what having a daily presence on TV meant to everything that well, she I does. Think it, it, she needs to come back and do a daily show there or something. Well, then, I read a statistic that Oprah now does some sort of live Friday night program or something. And I forget the amount of people that were watching it on OWN. It wasn't a lot of people. She went online after the show. And after the show, she went and answered questions online. And she had like 1.6 million people online Uh Uh asking her questions. And it was almost like people would rather go online and see Oprah than watch OWN. There's something about OWN. I asked her a question on Twitter once while she was doing that, Uh uh, soliciting comments. And she was a little cunty towards me. (laughs) Because I asked her a question because I've been watching all the Oprah behind the scenes show, which is fascinating because I think... She really allowed them to show the real her, uh-huh. which is not perfect. Right. And they show her b- being a big boozer. She's like, give me a Moscow mule. Where's the tequila? <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, Oprah. Oprah uh-huh. drinks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you don't lo- think of her like no. that. No. Right. And I also love that while watching the behind the scenes and seeing everybody that works for her, they all are in constant fear of her. Yes. And wanting to please her every single second. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, what a weird work environment that must be. So I asked her a question because I'm fascinated <laughs> by Oprah. And right. I also have this, not, I wouldn't say it's a morbid obsession, but I love life so much that the opposite of that frightens me. Like, I don't like death or the concept of it or knowing that it's going to happen. Right. Uh, because... I, I, I don't have blind faith or devotion. I wish I was one of those super religious people that would go through life saying, I know I'm going to go to heaven. I know there's a God. And that's be a lot safer happen. for you. It would, but right. I, I'm not. And I, I believe there's something else, but there's still that 1% doubt, and that 1% <laughs> kills me. So, so what I about the, Oprah, what, what did you ask her? I asked Oprah. I was like, you know, Oprah on Twitter, um, you know, ha- having watched the behind the scenes and knowing how much of a control freak you are because she hates surprises. Like, I don't like surprises. Right. Um, you know, death is the one one thing you can't control, what are your thoughts on that? And she responded Good saying, question. She responded saying, that's not a question for Twitter. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Did you know that? That's <laughs> not a question for Twitter. I was like, oh my Who God, I just got bitch that slapped on Twitter. for Oprah. Yeah. <laughs> that's not a question ah. for Twitter, but... You yeah, asshole. <laughs> yeah. Right. That, but if you, leave, if you live a good life, then there's no reason to be afraid. And I was like thinking to myself... Oprah just bitch slapped me. Yeah. And why is that not a question for Twitter? She could have said, "That's not. A, uh, there, there's no reason to be afraid if you live a good life. And go watch season 20, episode right. 30. Right. I did a whole uh, episode on that. But she didn't answer it that way. Is she it said, not but I good... loved that. I love that she was cunty towards me because it shows Oprah's not perfect. But Oprah didn't have to answer your question. She even. didn't. And right. I love the fact that she, she of, went on. Of and, all and, the people in the world, yeah. Oprah answered my question. <laughs> and not only that, she let it all happen. Hang out. She oh, didn't yeah. just uh, do the politically <laughs> and correct. I love thing. that Oprah's fat. I love that. <laughs> right. Have you seen her recently? She's gotten even fatter. Oh right. no. Oh and, yeah. And it makes you feel good because it makes when Oprah's thin, it's like oh, you know, she's got a chef. When Oprah got thin, everyone everyone would say to me, you know, fuck Oprah. She got thin because she has a chef, and it's easy for her because she has a personal trainer and blah 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 blah. What's great about it is she's still super fat, and she has a chef, and she has a personal trainer, and she still can't get it under control. I don't think she would say this, but my theory is that Oprah is choosing 
to be fat because she knows <laughs> right. what it takes. She's, yeah. Robin and I know what it yeah. takes she's to be been up not and down fat. and up right. and down. And yeah. she's not willing to put in what it takes to not be really fat. So what do you think Oprah's eating? I mean, she's not even eating she healthy. She's eating, she's food. drinking. She's drinking she's, and eating. She's yeah. having fun. Right. It's but... fun eating and drinking. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun. So Oprah has given up. I would be eating up. and drinking all the time if I could. <laughs> and do you think there's anything Oprah can do to get her channel? Like you you, you indicated that Rosie isn't doing well, but Rosie no. just started. I mean, she does have to build up well, now. Well, uh, apparently what they're reporting now is that there's been a big drop off from her de- oh. uh, debut. Yeah. yeah. I, I think, What's she I think doing Rosie's wrong? fucked. Is she, is, I love Rosie. Yeah. But I think what Rosie did wrong is she hasn't grown or evolved or has not shown a different side of herself yet. Mm-hmm. The the first few episodes have felt like that NBC variety show that she did, which bombed. Mm. If nobody watched that and that didn't work, what makes you think it's going to work now? And th- I love Rosie, genuinely. Right. But I feel she maybe is not manageable. She can't be controlled. She can't be produced. And she has her ideas and her way, and she might... Now, you seem to talk like a television executive. You seem to know how these people should... Has anyone ever come to you and said, Perez... I what can I do? do that. What can I do to get my career in line? It's like a, a Lindsay. Actually, not Lindsay herself, but back uh, maybe six months ago, Lindsay was working with some friends of mine. Yeah. We won't, I won't mention who they they were managing her. They're not managing her anymore, right? And they said, Perez, can you please have a meeting with Lindsay and talk to her and wow. and give her some advice? <laughs> and I did because I mean you met with her mm-hmm, in, privately. And I <laughs> where where do you go to meet her? At she house? came to my mom's house. I didn't wow. want her. Wow. <laughs> I didn't want her coming to my place in Why? case she was being followed by the paparazzi or in case she's really fucking nuts yeah. and then she's gonna go. Yeah, then she it was knows both where of you them. Are. So I had her yeah, come right. to my mom's. Smart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey mom, in case she goes nuts, let's do it. <laughs> Your place. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. When, when Lindsay flips out, she can come bother That's you. Right. She'll be at your house now. Wait to throw your mom under the bus. We yeah, can you're... hide over here. My mom lives in a, 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 in a secure apartment building right. with okay. Okay, so they have doormen that, that can stuff. throw. Yeah. Plus, your mom probably <laughs> likes seeing you meeting with Lindsay Lohan. It makes you seem important. I don't know if my mom knows who Lindsay Lohan is. Right. So, so okay, I had a meeting so you with her, there, yeah. and I, you know, told her all the things I think she should have been doing. What was your advice? I'm curious. Well, the number one piece of advice was. Shut up and go away. Right. For a long time. Like Mysteriously a year. disappear. Yeah, like hey, let people miss you. Stop talking about you. Don't go out anymore. <laughs> Don't go shopping. Do Even simple things. Like one of the first things she did like six or plus months ago when she got out of rehab earlier this year. She was in rehab until January of 2011. Uh, is She went to a, a gifting suite to get free <laughs> shit. Yeah. I'm like, you should not be going to Swag sweets to get free crap. Like, uh, stay home. Stay home. <laughs> right, yeah, right. Like, right out of rehab, you're getting free crap. And I then know. they ride about her and they yeah, follow her. They Even you probably her, had a ride. They about take her. photos and all right. that stuff. And, and, and all these things she was doing wrong. And she doesn't want to, and she does not want to hear it. She doesn't want to do it. And so as you, yeah, when, what does she say you, when you give advice? As you're she laying this out. She has an excuse for everything. What did she say? She's like, oh, I'm not really going out that much. All I do is go out for my court appointed uh, probation check ins. I'm like, oh, really? Because I saw photos of you here, and I saw photos of you there, and I saw photos of you here. Right. And she has an excuse for everything. And she's like, uh, all, and it's like, um, why did you go have um, lunch with Samantha Ronson? Why couldn't Samantha just come over to your house? Right. You didn't have to go have lunch with her in public. Just invite everyone to your place. Right. Stay locked in. I know it's not the most pleasant of things. Go or away. Move, do move whatever. out of Hollywood yes. so nobody's I mean, watching I mean, you. look at Robert Blake. He disappeared. He figured out how to do it. I mean, you know, you got... You, there are ways, and it's sad because she she will not learn from her mistakes. But She's don't a you broken think, record? Don't you think it's that she really is so addicted to this fame? Absolutely, and that she doesn't Absolutely. want. Absolutely, she doesn't want to listen to you. What is she without Absolutely. it? Absolutely, yeah. even that though you're you, giving her good advice. Absolutely, it's, it's, Howard. So, how long does this meeting go on? It was about an hour, and it was really awkward and uncomfortable and defense. She was so defensive, and I was like, "Listen, I, you know, I've known Lindsay." 
I, you know, I've been blogging for seven years now. I met her actually pretty early on. I've known her close to six years. And that's the thing. People that know her, it's like, she's kind of a nice girl. Right. But a big old fuck up. Right. <laughs> and I, I, I It's the dad and the mom, though, the, the environment she's been raised But after in. a certain point, you, you have to take accountability your... for your own actions. That's and you can't right. continue to blame it once you're 25 or 26 on your parents your that's whole right. life. That's right. And she, she, she has excuses for everything and won't, won't hear it. Did she it. appear high? No. No. She just appeared very defensive and not ready. You know, when some, you know, I was reading an interview with somebody close to Robert Downey Jr., and they said when he was ready to finally clean up, you just knew. Right. And Lindsay's not ready yet. That's well, she goes back to court today. Today, I know. It's going to be very interesting <laughs> because if I were that judge, I, I'd be like, girl. You've been given so many chances, too many chances, more chances than a normal person. Right. You're going to go to jail for a year, no early release. Or maybe I do the reverse math. I'm going to send you to jail for three years. <laughs> then you have to serve an entire year in jail. Right. Be good in jail and for behave For an entire yourself. year. Yeah. What exactly is she going to court about today? It was it's just an update on her probation. I see. Because it's you know every once in a while you have to go and, and the judge needs to get reports from your probation officer and see how you've been doing, but things haven't been going well. Yeah, she her. hasn't been doing She got probation. fired from her community service, had right. to get reappointed. There have been some... How do you get fired from community service? Because what she didn't there? show up nine times. Right. A few of the times she did show up, she'd stay for only an hour and then <laughs> leave. She said the people at the, <sighs> at the women's shelter were mean to her. That's what she said. What a handful. Well, deal with it. Deal with it, right. It's, 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 it's called community service. That's you have to, it teaches you to be humble. I so, mean, I want her to do well. It's Well, it sounds you know, like you have some kind of relationship with her where, where she actually came to you for advice, but she wasn't ready to take the advice. She's not ready. Even her father yesterday said, I think Lindsay should go to rehab for a year. Right. She's still having issues. And he specifically said Adderall and, you know, surrounding herself with bad people. When you're when you're we're at your mom's house with her, did, she, did you offer her a drink or anything? Uh, water. Just water. test water, her out. Just water? I'm not going to offer her booze. Well, oh, hey, come on. You can have no. a, a beer. She <laughs> just <laughs> gotten out of rehab. <laughs> Honey, you don't want a beer? Yeah, I mean, no, I, the I think bar that... is over there. The bar is open. But you know, actually, what I love is... You know, I, I made this shift and change last year to try to be more po to be more positive. Yes. And now this year, 2011, it seems as an observer of pop culture that it hasn't been about crazy, out of control celebrities. Instead, it's been about weddings. It's been a year of weddings, from the royal wedding to Kim Kardashian's wedding, and it's about babies and lots of people having babies. And it, it shows me Have that... Have you lost view, you know, readers? No, because thankfully, you... it's pretty much stayed the same. Right. So it shows that people like the good just as much as the bad. They also, whenever a new couple hooks but do you up, ever sit they there, love it. But do you ever sit there and go, oh, I just want to draw a dick in this fucking guy's of mouth? Of course. <laughs> right. And I have those impulses, and I squash them. And if I want to be really bitchy and cunty, I can do it privately with my amongst my friends but i've realized the older i've gotten that now i'm this public figure and i'm putting energy out there into the world and i need to be careful with what i put out there into the public and if i want to call somebody a stupid cunt, right? i can do it in private i don't I have see. to broadcast it to the world and the internet what Who was something the... recently uh, that you decided was too mean to put on there that you were about to write something and you said you know what <laughs> I'm going to hold Even that. something as simple as like when I posted the photo of Demi Moore earlier this week, yeah. old Perez would have been like, eat a sandwich. Right. <laughs> it's how I talk about things. I don't need to tell Demi Moore, eat a sandwich. So what she, did you say to be nice? I just said, you know, that it's clear she's going through something and hopefully the people around her encourage her to get help or that, or that she gets through it in a po in a positive way without turning to is not that just is. as mean in a sense i mean we all know no. what you're saying you're saying she's too thin no i think it is and but it's like i'm not saying she's anorexic i'm not calling her you know skeleton or, or right. saying she has zombie hands <laughs> a zombie hands is something i used to call nicole ritchie back in the day when she was going through her right. very skinny now she phase. got breast implants i, I she see did, did really you write about really that good. yeah i thought she looked pretty good with i them. did there's nothing mean with saying somebody 
got breast implants, especially when it's been reported. And they, they even mentioned which doctor it was. Right. I feel bad for you sometimes because now you have to be extra nice because you've come out as anti-bullying. And, uh, you know, uh, you got because everyone's got to think everything is bullying. <laughs> I know. Everybody All right, let's get down to it. If you could sell PerezHilton.com and the other websites that yeah. you have. What kind of money are you looking for? What would be a price At that would be agreeable? Point, Let's agree on a price. I would do it for... Come on. It'd be, if, if I could get a TV play in addition, then I would do it for $50 million. Five zero. Yes. $50 million. But if there's no TV component to it, then it'd have to be... A hundred million. Now, what are you basing these figures on? Do you, 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 you get on, a lot of advertising on Perez Hilton? Yeah, I see lots of ads I'm on. Very that. fortunate, and some people yeah. even complain. You get you got so much fucking ads on your site. Do you have a sales department? Yeah, I and have you a, have a head sales manager yeah, and the whole thing. I have thing. a great team called Blog Ads. So if you want to advertise on PerezHilton.com, you can email uh, P Hilton at BlogAds.com. Now, when you shameless plug, you <laughs> seem to be a big X Factor fan, as I, I am. I love X Factor, I, and, and you and you post on your website the. <laughs> performances. The are ones you pay- that I like. Are you paid for no, that? No, no. That's- just because I love the show. I love Simon Cowell. And um, I, I, and because they are smart. This is actually, you know, I to me, Simon Cowell is one of the smartest people around. And, and I'm so inspired by him. Mm-hmm. I don't watch television. Right. But I watch clips online. Yes. And Simon was smart enough, even though X Factor is not doing well in the ratings. It is doing well. I'll tell you something. It's doing well. It enough. is doing well. It's doing well. He, he made the expectation too high. I don't think it's doing well. The, it's the, number one in its time slot. Yes. Dot dot dot. But yes, the voice did better. Summer versus fall. Okay, that's a good point. Yeah, he's got much more but competition. I'm going to call X Factor a winner. The only thing I is, love it. I Simon love it. made the expectation so high. Yeah, he said 20 million. Yeah, that'll make it look like a loser, but it's a winner. But X Factor costs a lot more than The Voice. X Factor is such an expensive show to produce. I mean, you look at it, yes, they're it renting looks, out it, arenas. Yes. They're flying contestants to the judges' houses all over the world and having crews all over the world. So, what I was getting but, at but what is. What does it mean when they say there's a five Five million dollar prize. It's not it's five not. million. What does a five million dollar recording contract mean? I think it is five million. Like his own money. It is. In no, other words, no, no. I read the oh, really? the, the, the website, oh. and it's a five million dollar recording. Well, what does that give mean? It to you over that's several not, years. That sounds like horse shit. Because the again, you said it. These people think they're going to be buying people houses right. and all of this stuff. I don't know that you you certainly don't get a five million dollar check. Right. Maybe not all at once, but legally they'd have to give it to you eventually over okay. time so 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 why i post all of them is because simon puts them up on youtube right so it's easy for me to view the clips yes whereas a show like american idol and the voice they don't post their clips on youtube which for me is stupid and i understand the point of view of the network they want to keep it to their website like fox.com or hulu or nbc because they can make more money through selling ads yes. than having it on youtube uh-huh. but if you allow something to be on youtube it can maybe go viral and more people will end up watching your clip and then if stuff is going viral and people are talking about it then ultimately more people will watch the show what, ta- what, what how much advertising does PerezHilton.com <laughs> generate i'm curious uh enough but i don't actually look at the numbers how much money does it make i mean it must make a lot of money with all these ads what does it co- i want to buy an ad on PerezHilton.com. what's wanna, it cost me <clears throat> buy what they call a wallpaper i mean i yeah. i don't want to be that douchey dude who talks money that's not douchey <laughs> listen that's the business you're in it it it, it costs Something. I mean, okay, I'll give you answers. I'm not going to be that asshole who doesn't reveal answers to Howard. All right, go ahead. Perez, you were so lame. Uh, If you want to buy a a, a skin, uh, uh, takeover of this site, it's $50,000 for the day. $50,000 for the day. So, approximately, it might be a little more. When you say you'd sell Perez Hilton for $50 or to $100 million, you're basing that on some multiple of what the advertising brings in. Yes. Yes. And I'm also basing it on me and how long I've been doing it. And if I keep doing it for so long, you know. It is uh, amazing. I mean, when you think about it, I mean, you were a guy in his room writing some stuff about and my, But also my expenses are low. I don't have yeah. a big staff. I don't have big fancy offices. I don't. Who advised you to get a sales manager and all of that? And how do you hire one? They contacted me. 
they, the sales manager said, hey, I think I could sell advertising. The, it's, a, it's an outside company that sells my ads. I see. And so they, they take a percentage and yeah, then they, they give the rest to you. Yeah, they take a percentage, exactly. Wow, look they're at you. They're great. Yeah, they're awesome. Now, you wrote a children's book yes. about don't beat up people, right? It's about being different. Right. And But what's great about it is there's messages in there, obviously, for kids. Kids books. But there's messages also for adults. Actually, I have a copy for you well, here. Well, thank you. I, uh, and for Robin as well. You can read that to me, Howard. It's well, one of those picture books. Not only well, I read it to you, Rob. This is a book I could read because my reading level is very low. I'm starting to think I have a reading problem. It's called The Boy with Pink Hair. Oh, this is nice. So the message in the book is you're hoping that people with pink hair will be treated nicer. <laughs> no, my message is and there's a lot of messages, but it's right. about being different. It's about finding what makes you special, sharing that with the world, and about how sometimes all you need is one person to not look at you like a freak. To make all the difference. That's right. You feel accepted. Yeah. And, and it's just one person. That's sometimes all it takes. Are you the boy with the pink hair? Mm. I, I, yes and no. Yes. I, I am the boy with pink hair, but I really, it, to me, the pink hair is not about, it's, the book is not about being gay. It's about being different. And the pink hair is just a very visual representation of that. Are you being safe when you go on Grinder? Yes. The, the guy you blew last night uh, at the bar. The other night. The other night, sorry. <laughs> I don't have my night straight. But the, you went to your room. All that we did was oral. Uh, you, you blew him once? But I didn't, yeah, well, I mean, for an extended period of time. What do you mean? Like, not for like, well, not once for like two minutes. What do you mean? You blew, you only came once is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but oral what you, lasts tease? longer than It two, does? Than longer two than two minutes? minutes? Yeah. Well, you, you blow him a little bit, then you pull your mouth off No, then him. he'd blow me, and then we'd blow each other. That's <laughs> <It's> the <laughs> whole thing, huh? <laughs> yeah. I hope you're on the pill. <laughs> uh, oh, so you guys blew each other for a long time. What a transition from children's <laughs> book to blowing. <laughs> hey, look, talk to the author night. <laughs> they told you not to come uh, in here. No, 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 I love How it. How does the night end? Like, after you blow a load, that's he it? He left, and actually... Thankfully, he left because I'm nice and I would have let him spend the night and not like kicked him out. Oh. But he's like, should I go? And I was like, uh, I have to wake up extra early because I'm going to the gym in the morning. Yeah, you don't want to do it in, uh, do no. it in your bed all night. It's like, you know, <laughs> no. let's go to sleep. But I'm not the dude to be like, okay, thanks. Now leave. He was he was aware enough to be like, I, uh, should I go and ask? And I was like, yeah. Sounds like you guys drag out the night, though. I mean, like. I mean, it lasted a bit. Yeah. yeah. Like, do you wash each other's balls first or something? <laughs> Like, you get rid of the stink? Some, sometimes you you can or you do that, but we didn't do that. On How old a dude was this? 23. Man, wait, don't go with older guys. My balls <laughs> always smell lately. i got to constantly shower. I mean, it's like I'm catching up. Are you up. working out extra hard? I'm working out and stuff. Did you finish on his face? <laughs> That's no. right. I'd blow my fucking load right on his face. I wouldn't do that on a first time unless they ask for it. Where'd you finish? In his mouth? No, like over his chest. Oh, do you have a hairy chest? Do I? Did he? Did he? No, not especially. So you blew your load on his chest? Yeah. That got you off, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what was yeah. he laying on his back? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. Look at you. <laughs> yeah. no, Where did he finish? Uh, he came on like, on his back on himself. He came on himself? Yeah. That was polite. <laughs> did you say to him once? He was you... very polite. He asked, oh, should I stay? He was a very polite guy. Does he say to you, oh, I'm about to come. Where should I come? Oh, he didn't ask. He just said, oh, I'm about to come. He did? And then he just said, hey, I'll do it on I'll myself. I'll just lay right here. I'll be yeah. a I'll, just I'll stay where I'm at. <laughs> do you think he did that because you're famous and he didn't want to offend you? Well, I don't think you assume you're going to come on somebody else. Oh, yeah. It's a crazy scene, man, going on in that hotel room. Who finished first, you or him? Uh, I did. You did. Yeah. Good for you. And then you finished him off. <laughs> it's nice. Like, after I blow my load, I ain't finishing anyone. Yeah, you see ya. <laughs> I wouldn't be a very good gay man. Because, like, once I come, that's it. We're done. <laughs> but that was nice. You jerked him off a little. And, and, it was uh, all very polite and kind. Good for you. You know what? You're a gentleman. I have I, another <laughs> couple we should ask about. Will and Jada. Uh, yeah, I, you know, actually, oh, this is good. Yeah, what, now, what do you know about that? I know some insider information. Excellent. I, I, I don't even, sometimes I don't know why uh, some things just slipped through the cracks and I didn't talk about it on my website, but I heard it from very reliable sources. Yes. The story that uh, Jada cheated on Will with her TV co star, Mark Anthony, right. from my sources, may not be true. It might not have actually happened, but J Lo thought it happened. Uh -huh. So the, the story came from her camp, leaking it to the media. And somebody on J-Lo's team going to this magazine and be like, Mark is 
cheating on or cheated on J Lo with Jada. Oh, and that set the whole thing in motion. Even if it didn't happen, J Lo either wanted people to think it happened, right. or th- she herself thought it happened, and that's how it. Maybe all... she used it as an excuse to get out of the marriage Maybe. and say, she, "I can never trust you again." You so know? that's how that all happened. Oh. So I don't, I don't think Jada cheated on Will, but J Lo. Was Do you drama. think I've read? Well, are they getting a? Because everybody they're was still saying together. they're because I in heard that they have an open relationship. I mean, that they're allowed sorts, to fuck around. Yeah, there's all sorts. And of I heard rumors. that about Demi and Ashton. Yeah, I, I had not. I hadn't heard that about Demi and Ashton, but I've, I had heard that about Will and Jada. Really? And everybody said uh, there's rumors that she's a lesbian and he's gay and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I hear all this. I stuff. don't know. Who knows? You don't know. I don't For know. For once, you don't know. I don't know, yeah. All right, good. I knew right. Zachary Quinto was gay. <laughs> yeah, well, get somebody in here who knows. Here's some gay gossip. Here's some gay gossip. Give me some gay gossip. This either. Okay, Zachary good. Quinto just came out of the right. closet. Yeah. Awesome. Right. Congratulations for him. He's got a boyfriend, so I'm not outing him. Any- I wouldn't be right. outing him or his boyfriend because his boyfriend is out. I don't out people anymore either. Okay. Uh, but he is dating Jonathan Groff. You may not know who he is, but his listen- the li- some of your listeners might. He was on Glee. He played Jesse St. James. James. He's a big Broadway star too. So there's a guy I'm, you should blow, Zachary Kinto. Well, I, I could I'm, see you I'm two more together. I'm into Jonathan Groff. He's way hot. You're not into Zachary Kinto? He's nice. I've met him before. He's a nice, nice guy, but he's definitely. You know, Jonathan Groff is more my type. You know, it's funny. Are there any gay celebrities that are really straight? They're just pretending to be gay. I'm sure. Well, there That'd are. Be, there are. There yeah. are gay celebrities that pretend to be straight. Oh yeah, but I'm not outing them anymore. Oh okay. Are there? Any, <laughs> but but in other words, they're gay. They're openly gay, but they're really straight. Um, That's you're crazy. Acting like you're saying uh, they're straight s- people who are pretending to be gay. No. What? Gay people pretending yeah, to be yeah. no no yeah. That's yeah, what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. Oh, wait, oh, wait, I got confused. I'm con- you know what? Forget the question. Strike it. <laughs> All right. Perez Hilton's children's book, The Boy with Pink Hair, is in stores now. And check out Perez's website at perezhilton.com. And uh, if anyone wants to buy the website, $50 million <laughs> if you uh, want to partner in a TV project, $100 million if you just want the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, uh, yeah, I'll take a couple of phone calls for you real quick. And, okay. Uh, yeah, you're okay. Uh, let's go to Al. Al in Manhattan. Go ahead, Al. Howard, how you doing? Hey, brother. Man, 20 years. <clears throat> I just want uh, Perez's thoughts on this. My girlfriend is really sexual. Now she's telling me she had a dream that she was on top of me, fucking me. Ooh. And a guy, a guy rolls over and jerks off and comes in my face. And she wakes up having an orgasm from that. Oh. This is what that means. What does that mean? <laughs> it means that your sex with her is boring and she wants you to spice it up. But she's not saying, I want you to have sex with another dude. She's saying, you know, tie me up. Let's use some handcuffs. That's a very me. astute observation. Good you for know, you. Shit like that. Yeah, I like that. That's very good. Sandro, go ahead. Sandro in Ontario. Yes. I think he's busy. I think he's going to put down the phone. All right, Jenks, go ahead. Hey, uh, you sounded like you were shot out of a cannon this morning, all in a good mood for us, and I was wondering if maybe you got a little mud on the helmet last night. Not last night. I am in a good mood. I mean, I'm happy to be here. He's I'm thin. He's, uh, he's getting laid. He's, he's doing his thing. I'm happy to be in New York. I've yeah. been going to. I've seen six musicals since I've been here. I'm in gay <laughs> heaven. Well, my my wife is on your website I love your wife. constantly. How, how did you meet Beth? I, I met her at a uh, dinner party. Did she, did she, you went up to her, or did she come up to you? We, we, uh, we, you were both It's a there. whole long story how we ended okay. up at this dinner party. We both, it's a miracle we both ended up there, because I'm not a dinner party guy. You're not? Uh, no, and it was just very strange how I ended up there. Well, he's just asking who talked to who first. And then we were sitting there, and I believe she put some food on my plate. Mm, and uh, and 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 uh, I kept eating. I wasn't paying attention to anyone. I'm like a ravenous beast when I'm eating, <laughs> like, like 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 a marauder. Like and he then, goes to a dinner party really to eat dinner. And I believe <laughs> I I do too. But I believe when we were at the table, I started uh, yelling at some people about um, psychics because they were saying they believed in this stuff. And I turned to Beth and I started to talk to her about this psychic thing. And then she went up to go, go to the bathroom. I said, who gave you permission to go to the bathroom? Ooh. And uh, <laughs> she was like, what? And so I believe I would be, to answer your question, I was the first one to talk to her. But yeah. she gave you subliminal clues saying I'm into you by putting the food on your plate. She did. 
She did, and she said she was intrigued by me, as most people are. I love that. Because, I mean, you look at me, you can't help but be intrigued. It's got to be something that. going on. Yeah. Oh, it's that. big romance, big romance. I love that. We went out to dinner last night. You see, I had a, earlier, earlier in the year, my new thing, I'm all about grinder. I want to be a slut now, but earlier in the year. You just want to blow random guys. Earlier in the year, I was all about dating. Right. So I joined all these dating websites. Mm. I joined Match.com. I joined OkCupid. Okay Can't you meet tons of guys being famous and being in it's Hollywood? It's hard because I think even still a lot of gay dudes are embarrassed by me or ashamed of me, think I'm a dick. Right. For a variety of different things. So I'm trying to create, or I was trying to create more opportunity. And then I would power date. I'd go out for coffee dates. And I'd do three in one day. One at 5 p.m. <laughs> here, one at 6 p.m. there, one at 7 p.m. there. Because you were and trying I, to get, what, a relationship? No, I was thinking, all right, it's like math. It's like gambling. The more you play, eventually you'll hit the jackpot. But then after a while of doing that, I realized, fuck, the house always wins in Vegas. You only lose. Yeah. And I kept just wasting Listen my time going you on want some advice? From me. Dates. You yes. be Lindsay Lohan and I'll give you the Please. advice. Please. I see what type of guy you are. Okay. I think you got a good heart. I, I do. I think you need to be in a relationship. I would love that. Yeah, I think you need to meet somebody and be one of these power gay couples. <laughs> That's what you need. I got a lot of friends I, I that, are, that are gay powerful couple. gay couples. I don't want someone who will like use me to get any kind of attention. No, for no, themselves. no. You need a guy who's got his own thing going yeah, on. Yeah, he's got his own. Exactly. And the two Successful, of you parade around and you go, you're go. invited to all the parties and the two of you become the delightful <laughs> on the circuit. I don't, I don't want to do that. I want to have mm. kids. I'm, I'm like, my clock is ticking. I'm ready to pop one out. Yeah, well, let me tell you something. <laughs> You need to so you need to stop blowing guys in hotel rooms and start seriously looking for some soulmate. No, my this is what well, maybe I'm wrong. My new approach is to not even look for it. I think it'll just happen. Meaning, I was looking for it too much and it wasn't working. So just get out there and see what happens. And then, no, my new thing is now I'm just trying to make as many new friends as possible. Right. Because I feel like somebody gets to know me as a friend and they realize, oh, Perez isn't who I thought he was. I actually kind of think he's cool, and oh, I never thought I could maybe, maybe I could date him, or if not, and when then you go on these dates, other people, are you super chatty about yourself? No, or I like are you, to ask a lot of questions. You ask questions yeah. about the guy, you pay attention to him. Yeah, it's mainly me asking questions because I'm sort of interviewing them. What are you I was going to say, is it like an interview? <laughs> yeah. uh, what are you looking for, a twink, or no, are you looking for? I, a... I'm looking for somebody n genuinely nice. Give me a celebrity who you're attracted to, so I know normal. the type you're looking well, for. Jonathan Groff is so, totally. Give cute. me someone I've heard of. Um, <laughs> you watch that TV. show? Show Brothers and Sisters? No, I don't uh, watch Luke that. Luke McFarlane is. I think Neil Patrick Harris is really hot. Right, that type. He's sort of twinky, yes. though, right? I kind of no, like that. Not. But he's 35. Sure he is. Neil Patrick is twinky. I want a 35 year old twink like Neil Patrick Harris. That's, that's what you're looking twink. for? I like the all American, like I, like, I like, I like Broadway boys or nerdy guys. You know, I just like sweet. I like someone you could tell is sweet and nice and, and real. Well, I don't know anyone like that. <laughs> and Only drama, in the movie. And drama free. I don't like drama in my own life. I don't like confrontation. I like easy and boring. That's part of the reasons why I live in L.A., because it's easy. <laughs> Should Nicole Scherzinger be allowed to judge anyone musically? <laughs> She's an amazing singer. She is? Yes. Okay, I don't no, know that about she's her. an amazing... I don't know. There was this one moment on the show earlier in the season where... Where she sang. She sang uh, to show Simon off, and she did a Whitney Houston, and she's like... Oh, and that really? was a good moment. She shut him down. It was uh, awesome. All right, listen to me. Yes, Howard. The book is called... The Boy with Pink Hair. Boy with Pink Hair. If you got kids, it's a good message for them. You understand this kind of thing. All and right? if you are... You want to go out with High Pitch Mike tonight? If you're a girl... Uh, actually, I'm having a party tomorrow night. He can come to that as my guest if he wants. Oh, wonderful. At, uh, Do you know Hammerstein. him at all, Mike? Yeah, we met before. You're not your type? He's twinky. He you're a twink. Get in here. <laughs> come here, twink. We'll come have a seat. <laughs> come yeah, a seat and a blow party. Perez. I mean, it's, um, say hello to Perez. I'm, I'm having a, a party twink. Thursday night here in New York City. It's a you want to go to the party? It's a, it's a benefit for Glisten, the Gay Lesbian Straight Education Network. Can I pitch Mike get a shot of blowing you at all? <laughs> I mean, sure, you'd blow Please, Perez, right? When, when you said, spot. I, I, are, I, are you interested in I, blowing I, Perez? Uh, Seriously, let I'd me talk let to him Mike. Give me a hand job. You would? <laughs> yes. Oh, that's, that's, Mike, <laughs> that's progress. You want to give Perez a hand job tonight? <laughs> we, yeah. Tomorrow, tomorrow night. night. Why not tomorrow in the studio? Night. No! <laughs>
Oh, you're out on spontaneity. Stop doing porn. Boys, why, you're on Grinder, right? Yeah. Yeah. How come you two have never hooked up? <laughs> Are you on right, right now? I'm um, on right now. My Let phone's me... in the other room. Oh, I want to see you on. <laughs> I'm, I'm on right now. But when he said, is would it... you settle? Uh, he wants a 35 year old queen. I'm a year away. Look, that's, that's, that's my photo. Is this a good photo? That's a good photo, right? Okay, you need a. You, I've seen great photos of you on red that's carpet. That's not a good photo. No. I think this is a good photo. Yeah, you look like Simon Cowell. I'm trying to come across as handsome and butch. I'm uh -huh. trying to butch it up. <laughs> he looks good in that picture. No, I've seen him on red carpets. And yeah, but I'm not going to put a red carpet you attracted photo. That's to douchey. Are you attracted to Perez at all? He's a, he's a good looking guy. He's, I, I prefer like a very young, like 20 How something. How young? Like 20, 22. How old like, are you? 34. You want a 20 year old? I mean, I'd fuck a 20 year old, but I'm not going to date a 20 year old. Well, yeah. Maybe right. it's time for the both of you to mature. And, 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 no, and... no. I want a 35 year old no, you know boyfriend. What's, you know what's very attractive about him, seriously? Go ahead. Is his, his uh, work ethic. Oh. He's very motivated. He's very hardworking. I, I know you admire that. Yeah, yeah, like, I wouldn't want a guy who's looking for a job or anything like that. But right. Yeah, I actually had that a moment like that recently, too, where earlier in the year when I was power dating, I'd be willing to give people chances. Now I had a moment where I was like, fuck that. I need to date someone who's successful. Right. I need to date an equal, because that's what the relationship is all about. It's about equal equality. And, you know, it's, it can't so be So how come all... Mike's only going to give you a hand job? Why can't he blow you? Because although he's a very nice guy, I'm not that into him. You're not. No. Listen, I think if we were on Grinder and he saw other pictures of me, I mean, not the face. I mean, you're, you're I right think we'd be, oh, you're doing more than What are you handjobs? sending out on Grinder? <laughs> what do you mean? You mean if you saw how big your cock is? Wait, so, <laughs> go get your phone. I want to see. Go get your phone. I want to see. Mike, what are you doing? You're Show putting, me. You're putting you pictures. You put your cock on. You put pictures of your cock on Grinder. No, this is the thing. Out. No, you send. You send. You put your face picture up. Right. Yeah. And if you know, you talk to the guy if you're interested. Did whatever. Right. And some guys are like, do you have any other pictures? Do you send right. your butt photo to No, I'm not a <laughs> butt type guy. <laughs> your ass so what are you doing? When you get to know a, when you get to know a guy, you're taking pictures of your cock and sending it to him? I want to see photos of your cock. Can we get your phone in here? Uh, <laughs> come on. No, because you'll probably post it online. No, I'm not gonna, you're not going to give them to me. What are you saying? You're saying that your forte is once you get in a conversation with a guy. If it's, if it's a guy cock. I really want to give A guy you want to... <laughs> yeah. You show him a picture of your cock. And that just that seals usually, the deal. Yeah. That, that oh, and why does it seal the deal? Are you exceptionally large? Pretty big. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Easy on. does it. Let's have a little romance first. Let's see. Wait a second. So, so... <laughs> You're saying sometimes a guy's kind of into you, but not that into you, and then all of a sudden you show him Boom. your cock, yeah. and then he goes berserk. Yes. <laughs> wow. I, I need you. to see this magic cock. Really? How big is your cock? Uh, big enough. Like, mm. How big? How many inches? More than six. Mine is way more than six. Ah, oh, well, come on. Let's go in the green room right now. I'm about eight and a half. I've got a big old Cuban cock. Is that right? Wow. <laughs> you got eight and a half? Yeah. That should be the headline on PrezHilton.com, not this celebrity <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> yeah, because my straight, predominantly female readers want to know gonna how gonna big my dick that. is. Yes. So how big's your cock? <laughs> like seven. Is it? Yeah. I'd say that's above average. Yeah, that's, that's good. Above yeah, average. Because, Three yeah, inches above mine. It, I, think it's ex <laughs> I think it's big enough because there's times you get with like a cute guy yeah. and then you take his pants off and I'm like, what the fuck is that? I oh. get so uncomfortable when that happens. If somebody has a small penis, I don't like to touch it. Just because, really? Because I um, maybe it's my own hang up, but I feel if I touch it or suck it, then I'm making them feel uncomfortable. So I what do you mean? want him to do with Meaning, this? like, if I were somebody with a really small penis, I would just have a jack a jock strap on all the time and be like, just fuck me. Don't even look at my penis. Don't touch my penis. Really? Because I'd be so self-conscious. You say if, I should if, wear a jock I mean, this guy should wear a <laughs> jock strap? No, I'm talking about if you have a four-inch dick. Right. If it's that small, which it has happened. Mm -hmm. Right. Then just wear a jock strap and just... I'm six inches hard, though. That's fine. That's, That's good, right? That's a nice size, That's right? average, yeah. yeah. You boys wouldn't reject me, would you? No. Not at all. That's oh, average. You. I'd blow that. You, know. you would. You could touch yeah. that. Okay. Play yeah. with my balls. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. That's nice of you to say. <laughs>
So no kidding. So no love connection let's see here. Your, let's see your cock photo. Come on. You don't want to see Howard, this. let's make this Where happen. is your cock photo? Show you the guy your cock. Maybe I'll we'll get your date. Phone. We'll go to the Lady Gaga no, concert on the next tour. Right I'll, I'll show it to you after a few beers at the concert. So shy. So shy. So, I mean, does that sway you now that you hear he's got a seven-inch cock? No. It doesn't? No. No, Perez has the seven-inch. No, right? he's got eight and a half. Oh, oh, he's got eight and a half. They got oh 15 God. inches of cock wow. between them. Wait, there's, a, there's an important question I have to ask. Go ahead. Cut or uncut? Cut. Oh, okay. I'm not a fan of the uncut cock. Okay. What are you? Either one. What no, mean? I mean, what do you have? Oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what, what? I thought you meant which did I prefer. No, what kind of cock do you have? Cut. Cut. You're cut, yeah. 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 I never thought my boss would ask me how my cock looks. I'd fire people if you You brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so uh, you boys no love connection, huh? Sorry. I guess not. Are there any other gays on staff? Uh, Fred, you'll blow up for us, won't you? <laughs> no, 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 no. You're not attracted to him? I guess uh, not. I don't know. Any other gays on staff that we know of? Um, Richard and Sal, but they're both married. <laughs> to each other. That's Damn it. it. Well, Do they have an open relationship? It was, we could ask. So how are you doing on Grinder? you having as much luck as Perez? Uh, once in a while, yeah. Uh, you go out and you go to the bar and you I meet I probably have more luck, too, but... I mean, I'm on there, and that's enough for me. I don't, I don't message people. Right. I like to have them message me. Right. And do they know who you are? Well, the headline, I, my headline is, yes, it's really me. Oh, okay. All right, well, there you go. All right, listen. <laughs> With a big two. old face pic. Sorry, there's no love connection. It's all good. Well, uh, aren't we lucky to have the author of a children's book here <laughs> talking about his oh, eight and a half inch cock? <laughs> you see, <laughs> human, we're human beings. That's all. Well, these people have children. Yeah. Maybe the next book should be called The Boy with the Eight and a Half Inch Cock. <laughs> <laughs> He's really different. <laughs> well, Perez, uh, delightful to see. It's always Thank good to you, have Howard. you here. You're always a great guest. The Boy with the Pink Hair is the book, and uh, illustrated by Jen Hill. She's awesome. And uh, you can pick up this book. Let's see. Uh, On Amazon.com. There you go. And check out Perez's website at PerezHilton.com. Good Thank to see you, you Perez. You we'll too. be back right after these words. Here he is. Mike. Hey. Sort of an unsuccessful mission in there. I mean, well, he agreed to a hando. No, he asked for a 35-year-old twink, and I'm a year away from that, you know. Next summer, I'll be 35. But I've already got the twink, obviously. Look at this. Great, thin body. What more could he want? Yeah, I'd say you'd fit the twink category. Thank you. You too. And you're... you're, you're packing. Here, let me hold the camera. Let's show the viewers what a twink looks like. <laughs> and you're packing a little monster in your pants. Well, yeah, you could say that. You could say that. Where's your hey, phone? Good, good attempt today, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. He's not going to show me his cock. Ah. If he showed it to you, Perez, would you be willing to go on a date with well, him? Well, yeah, I think it's a magic cock. He says he's been able to, like, make stuff happen. i got to see. I need to see first. Mike, pressure's on, man. All right, just let us close the door. <laughs> show, show him. What? Who needs a photo when you can see the real show thing? Oh, not I need to see the real thing first. He's teasing you. He's dangling the cock right now. <laughs> Mike, I don't need Mike, to see it in person. Don't Mike, break out the little monster. Come on, show us. Come on. Come on. That's not the definition of a little monster, but we are little monsters. Yes. We both support you know, Gaga and stopping bullying and all that. Howard's tried to pair you two together several times now. I think this is either the second or third time. It's just not a love connection. It's, no, it's more it is. Of a, you know, every, you know, people, some people more than others have very specific types. I have a very specific type. I usually love blondes, all American looking guys. Because I think you're, I, I personally am drawn, or think a lot of people are drawn to the opposite of what you had growing up. And I'm Cuban from Miami, grew up around all these Cuban guys. So to me, somebody from Iowa who's blonde is, Oh, the opposite. I never saw blonde people. <laughs> so I want, I want a piece of that. <laughs> You're looking for more of an Aryan look. No. Uh, Zach Efron's not Aryan, but I would fuck to come out of him three times a day, every day. You could print he's that. 24, 25. He's 24, 25. So is Mike... It, Mike's around the right, I guess, body type, but he's a little too ethnic for you, is what you're saying. I wouldn't say that. I would just say... He doesn't fall into the bubble of my general... You know what it is? We're two powerful gays. <laughs> and you can't have two equals in a relationship. Yes, you can. I want that. You need two opposites to attract. No, opposites do attract, but I do want an equal, too. It's important to have an equal. Perez, so much was said about your transformation, about um, you know how you're trying to sort of... You, you want to be more sassy, I think yes. is what you said, than, than me. I changed the tagline of my website from Hollywood's most hated website to Hollywood's most sassy website. 
Because sassy is a good word. You can be sassy without being nasty. Now, with part of your transformation, you said you want to become more of a slut. Yes. But the fact that you're such a public figure, are you worried that when you do stuff like using the grinder app? No, I don't might care. End up on I talked about site? it publicly. I have no secrets, nothing to hide. When you. I, I even tweeted earlier a couple of days ago saying, I'm getting no love on Grindr. <laughs> so when you go on the offensive like that, you kind of. You yeah, take I'm away not. Any, any I'm not the there's no shame. Okay. Plus, also, Grindr just isn't about sex always. Like, most people are on there for that, but there are some people who just want to, like, meet people and stuff. There are some uh, legitimate yeah. hookups going on that aren't sexual. Yes. Well, Perez, I look forward to your next visit. Thanks Me for too. Stopping by. Hopefully, Howard's still on. He's still here. I think he will. I, th I hope so. Yeah, for sure. Don't go anywhere. All right, man. Thanks. Thank you. Production. On this episode, Brian Phelan gets a new best friend. This is Brown when he's sleeping. And we meet the man behind the voices, <laughs> Sour Shoes. The lines are all jammed up. Uh, it's a very guest heavy day. Give me that love organ, yeah! What's your problem? Testing, one, two. Uh, <laughs> yeah! <laughs> hey oh yeah! I have been the spokesperson for the North Shore Animal League America for over six years now. North Shore Animal League is Beth's passion. Dogs and cats are her passion and animals and animal rights and she loves uh, finding homes for these dogs. Well the story of Duncan, the little um, basset hound beagle mix, was I had a purse and I thought I want to go up and say hi to my husband but I also would like to smuggle a puppy up. Hi adopt me, my name's Duncan, I'm 10 weeks old and I'm a basset hound mutt degree. Aren't I cute? Are you kidding me? You get your sweet face. What is a little pig? I don't know. What? I wonder if she pee. Like, why am I? Why is my boob all wet? Flubber? A little awkward. <laughs> Look at like talk about. I'm doing Good Day New York, and I'm gonna have. Hi, I'm black dating. <laughs> Cool because dog. I knew you could get up That's eventually, fine. and That's I was fine. getting this one up. Yeah. How are you? They are my heart and soul. It's my passion in life to just spread the word. You rescue an animal, you're saving a life. No. Ten week old basset hound mix. <laughs> Mud agree. Right, Mud agree. Yeah. Mud agree. Up for adoption this weekend. Up for adoption for a sure animal like this weekend. Well, I had a dog, a basset hound, and when we had our second child, it, the dog got hit by a car and died. Uh, and I wasn't really into getting another dog and raising a child and a puppy at the same time, so we held off on getting another dog. Goodbye, Gary. Out of the blue, I was going to go run in on the air and say I want the dog, but, you know, being married, you always got to ask permission somewhat and make sure it's cool with the wife. So I texted her, and she said, send me a picture. Hey, Beth. Hi. Brian asked if I could take a picture of him because... Brian Phelan, you might want to adopt oh, his yes, wife, you might want to adopt yes, Let's get the whole... Okay. The dog is adorable. Ever, right? Mm -hmm. I was there when Greg Carmel took a picture of Phelan's dog, and I was like, that is a really cute guy taking a picture of a cute dog. How old is it? Cool. Ten weeks. Got it? Got it. Thank cool. you.
Brian Phelan said he just might want to adopt the dog. I just heard. Yeah, Let so. us know. All right. So I sent this picture to my wife, and she said, yes, let's get the dog. Hey, uh, just yeah, show you back. Show you back? back? No. I'll be on the TV. That's why. He wanted a pet for the kids, and the fact that he adopted a puppy is great. Beth will make sure that you get yeah, the dog. Yeah, just to make sure that you didn't... All uh, right. Just, I left the message on the phone to what my number, so just give me a call and have a call. I'll call, call her when I get downstairs. Thanks. Beth came in with the puppy, and Beth was sitting there with the puppy, and Brian got taken. I was glad for the dog. I'm glad for Brian's family. Brian's a great guy. I'm sure he's a, a great owner. And from that point on, I put him in touch with the people at North Shore Animal League. I go home and I tell Tammy, my wife, that, you know, we're going to get the dog, but I want to do a surprise to the kids. Guys, come over here. I tell my kids that someone special is coming to visit us at the house. We have to go pick them up. So my kids are asking a million questions, who, 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 and they're going through the whole list of people, you know, grandpa, grandma. And the second we get off the expressway to get the dog at the North Shore Animal League, my daughter says, are we getting a pet? And I just shut up after that. Okay, this is your big we surprise. We have a ride. Guess who we're picking up? Who? Rachel, if you reach over there, there's something in the middle of the of the thing. There is? Yeah. Uh, there's a red thing there? Something red. Is there something red there? Red. Underneath that stuff? Red. Yeah, grab that. Here. Oh, a dog! We're getting a dog. I think dog. we're going to get a dog. Being a dad, you know, and surprising the kids, I feel like a new addition to the family. I feel like, you know, kind of cool. You know, like, hey, dad, dad stepped up and we got a dog. It's a great day when you're walking into the office at 6 in the morning and you hear, You can soak. Hi. Good morning. Yeah. I knew for sure it was Sour Shoes as soon as I heard that voice. So I turned around, pulled out my camera. What's up, Sour? You can talk. It's video. Where's Pharrell? He's right here. Um, yeah, amazing last night. Uh, four hockey games. I got them all right. I got the Bruins score right. I had the lightning over my penguins. They wouldn't shoot the puck in the fourth period. In the third period. As soon as I got up to the control room, I told the guys that Sour Shoes was outside. I immediately dispatched the crew. I'm trying to get this all wired up. The first thing Sour Shoes does is he gives us a tour of this horrendous looking car. I believe that car is a Valiant, by the way. It's just this old car and inside is junk, almost like he's sort of a hoarder slash homeless slash musician going on the road to tour. Come on in. The ward is fine. This radio is, is a AM, AM radio, and I think Frankie or Steven, my big brother's, Put this tape and this is the Beatles 67 to 70. Thanks, cousin. You know, this is a great, you know, whenever you can make compilation tapes, it's great, cousin. And uh, I was just it was just great. Uh, about 40 songs, and for the price of four dollars, you can't beat that one. Come on, let's play. <laughs> <laughs> the seats are very comfortable, it's burlap. It's burlap, so it's very comfortable. I got my good clothes in here. Uh, I was hoping there could be an opening in the sales department here. Give you an example. <laughs> and I want to just relax a little bit. I take, I go in the back seat. My car. One of the oddest things that we saw in his car were these coloring books that Sour Shoes had. But they're not like your everyday normal coloring books that you would give to kids. But he really seemed very happy and infatuated with these demented coloring books. <laughs> And then I like to serenade for a little while. <laughs> uh... The guy even has a, a, an old school telephone in his car. Yeah, I have this again. This, this one's rigged up to the carburetor and I'm able to get callers coming to the phone line. They're all jammed up this morning. Where are you calling from? Oh, Sheboygan. We've got a prize package to the Sheboygan Sausage Festival. Alan Kirschfeld. It's an all expenses yours trip. How does that sound, caller? He shows us this keyboard that he somehow has rigged to the engine of his car. The keyboard, it needs probably another hour to warm up. Yeah, probably about another hour to warm up. And Scott, Scott hasn't come down yet. Scott! Wow. See, if I idle it real high, I can get the uh, RPMs up, and then I can power the organ off. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, 
loves Oregon. Give me that love Oregon, yeah. 99% of the time, he would talk to you doing imitations. It could be Artie, it could be Gary, it could be Tracy Millman, Scott Farrell, so many different imitations, and he's spot on with all of them. You turn your radio down. All right, uh, just, the lines are all jammed up. Uh, it's a very guest heavy day. The first time I heard the Sour Shoes impression, I didn't think it sounded like me. Right, I gotta go. BBM me later, right. I think the Sour Shoes impression of me is a tiny bit effeminate, which I'm not really a fan of. How can I help you? Right. Yes, Tracy. Douche. Fuck you. The guy is just absolutely captivating. I'm not, I'm not, I'm tired. I'm not doing this right now. You didn't get a single buyback. Hello. I, Gary, I love you. Gabba Bluey, I love you, but... D d yeah, yeah, but this whole Don Rickle shit doesn't fly with me. Yeah. No, it doesn't. Whoa, embargoes, PLO, wow. He's just a big kid in a grown up's body. I love you. Love you. <laughs> All right, I'm at the North Shore Animal League and I'm here to pick up. Pumpkin the dog. No. Let's go inside and uh, no. see what we got. Right, kid? Yeah. Come on in. That day, there was an event going on at the North Shore Animal League, so we walk in and there's, you know, a ton of people and a ton of animals and just dogs everywhere. Yeah, I was never going to guess, and I did. You did guess. You guessed right. And what is it? A dog. A dog. That's right. A dog. Are you psyched? Yeah, you excited? You can have a doggy? And the woman from North Shore brings over the dog and introduces us. Hey, here we go. Hey, hi. There's your doggy, Rach. <laughs> My daughter is very excited, but very timid because she doesn't, she's, you know, never really had a dog, so she doesn't know how to react to it. So she didn't really want really, to really touch it at first. Okay, yeah, you don't want to hold him? I would love to hold him. The dog was just so cute. I mean, it was so small. It, it was 10 weeks old. See, look at these paws. Look. Yeah. How you doing, buddy? Wow, you are a cute dog. Oh my gosh, he's so <laughs> cute. Look at how cute little he is. That's our new doggy. Look, he just picked out a... He just got him a little, a little bandana. There you go, cool. I knew that that dog was going to go to an amazing home. Look at this little pumpkin. Come on, Oh, you like Oh, you like your belly rub? They're warm, they're healthy family, they're gonna treat this dog the right way. And if Brian had any questions, he knows who to ask. So I felt like the, keeping it in the network of family, it makes it even better. All right, so I got the dog, here he is. Name's Duncan right now, but I think they wanna change the name. And uh, we're gonna go home and uh, enjoy the doggy. So thanks for uh, everything. Goodbye, doggy. And we brought the little guy home. There you go. Hey, look at how small you are. <laughs> he looked like a squirrel in my backyard. It, it was just crazy how the size of what he was. Look at how small you are, you little <laughs> doggy. Uh, Brownie, look, 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 boy, look, Brownie. I put the camera down, and unbeknownst to me, my daughter grabs the camera and just starts filming a ton of stuff with the dog. Hi, everybody. I'm Rachel, and this is Kevin, and we are going to be videotaping a new member of the family. She's 10 weeks old. It's a boy. He has a cold, and it's Brownie! The dog's name was Duncan, which I loved. I thought it was a perfect name. He looks like a Duncan. It was just awesome. And the kids weren't happy with that name. They didn't like him at all. And of course, um, being a father, you have no say. And the kids just overrule, and they name the dog Brownie. This is Brownie when he's sleeping. There he is. And this is Kevin's dirty face. And there's Kevin. Show Kevin's dirty face. There's Mom. Is he sleeping? There he is. 
He's so cute. She's her own little camera person now. She does better work than me. Once again, I'm Rachel. Goodbye. Brownie, say goodbye. Brownie! My first dog I had, I never caged, but everybody told me to cage the animal. It would be easy for training it. So I got a cage, and the first thing I did was I put a wee-wee pad in the cage as a layer, like a blanket, to, to be comfortable instead of just nothing. Those little wee, wee pads have a scent that is that dogs know to pee on it, and Brian couldn't understand why the dog was peeing where he slept. Well, he had the wee, wee pad in the crate. People, I don't think anyone else but Brian Phelan would do something like that. I'm not even going to explain the ridiculousness of that action. Brian, the crate isn't for shitting. You're putting. You don't want the dog to shit in the in the crate. But you're putting wee-wee pads in the crate? Wee-wee pads make dogs pee and shit in there. Now that he owns a dog, he knows everything about dogs, and I'm some kind of idiot. Why would you put a wee-wee pad in the, in the cage with it? Because I wanted something that it could lay on that would be comfortable. Instead How about of just a bed? That. How about a towel? People get upset with these dogs. They go, oh, the dog doesn't uh, do the right thing. The dog's a mess. The dog, you know, pisses on the floor, pisses in the cage. I do. I have a towel and the wee-wee pad in case he did go the to the wee -wee bathroom. The wee-wee pad doesn't... No, no. no. The wee-wee pad says to the dog, go to the bathroom. Why are you using wee-wee pads? Bring because the dog I was, outside. I, got, I do. Yeah. I, I brought the dog and if home. you're going to put a wee-wee pad somewhere, don't put it in the cage where it sleeps. After getting uh, on the air, the wrap-up show has me on to talk about it. So did you think Howard was pissed off at you this morning? Yeah, he was yelling at me the other day. He told me I didn't know what I was doing because uh, I, you know, I put the wee-wee pad in the, in the crate and you're not supposed to do that. That's where they sleep. And uh, he goes, you know, you don't know what you're doing. I got to get you a trainer, blah, blah, blah. He says I needed a trainer to train the dog. But having three kids and having a dog before... I think I could handle training a dog to go to the bathroom outside. Because all my kids go to the bathroom outside. <laughs> like, I have three kids, and I had a dog before. I, I know how to train something, you know? Like anything, uh, if somebody has a dog or somebody has a child, they all have to give their opinion. It's the people. It ain't the dog. The dog is perfect. The dog will do whatever you want it to do. you got to spend some time with a dog and train them. He's a good dog. We love him. Uh, it's very cool to have a dog again. I'm very happy. This was a successful adoption. I love the Phelan family. This dog is in an amazing home. The updates I get are just so joyful for me to hear. And it was just the home run all around. It makes me so happy. Overall, taking the dog from the shelter, uh, I think was great. Um, he's a cool dog. He's great with the kids. Uh, they all love him. Everybody loves him. You know, he's just such a cute dog, you know, a little hound dog. And uh, he's part of the family now. He's one of us. He's a Phelan. After spending about an hour with this guy outside, you're thinking, it would be great to spend more time with this guy. Better yet, it would be great to spend time with him in his own comfort zone, which would be his home. The Sour Shoes pool party came about because he's always told us, invited us to come up and, and, and swim in his pool. So we decided we would do a radio show of Sour from his pool. I said, gee, he's so entertaining. Maybe we should put him on the radio, see what he does. And that's the beauty of satellite radio. You can do things like that. On terrestrial radio, I never could do that. We're on the pool deck. I love you. I liked creating a pool party. You know, I had an idea that having a pool party would be great. Have like a live broadcast. And then, then Jimmy said, yeah, they'll, they would come up and, and do something like that. What a beautiful evening. Humidity seems to have departed. 79 degrees. We prepped like we would any remote show. It's pretty easy to set up nowadays. Technology's getting smaller and smaller. We show up with just a little suitcase full of gear. We did have to set up lights because it was going to get dark and we had to make sure we saw Sour in the pool. It was a little hazardous at times with water splashing and our lights being so close to the pool, but we were willing to, at least I was willing to, to wing it because, well, I wasn't in the pool. We were just, you know, extremely careful and made sure that 
that uh, everything was kind of a, as far away from the water as possible. The Sour Shoes Radio Show. Looks like we got some song requests to you. Those that are on your mind, yeah, we got some fun. Everything that you could possibly ask for in the next hour. Sour Shoes. <laughs> Oh, I love that intro. I do love that. <laughs> Sour 101. Uh, in and a Give me a call. We'll get your requests out tonight and try to get your prize packages out to you. Yeah, just sit back and relax like here in the pool. Everything was working for hours before the show started. And of course, 7 p.m. hits. We go live. And 90 seconds into the show, the keyboard craps out. Kick it off alongside the music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, our keyboard's lit. He has this antique keyboard, I, I would say, almost. It's like an 80s Casio that he's just been using all these years. I play a 1989 Casio. Let's go out to the phones. <clears throat> Pookie, how are me? The keyboard's so old and, and, and beat up now that the where the power plug, you know, the, the AC plug meets the jack in the back, is is so worn out and broken. You got it. Oh, wonderful. I'm, the water temperature is about 82 degrees. It seemed like uh, every time we came back from commercial or something like that, the keyboard would crap out. Yeah. Oh, we lost power again. I'm sorry about that. Oh, we're back. Oh, we're go. No, we're back. Oops. Hold on. It was going so well all day. There was a little bit of panic at first. Because it is like a security blanket. Ooh, baba, baba, wee, baba, 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 my, my monkey. Oh, we're back. We had it. Friends, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, on the EIB network, we're uh, having uh, problems with the keyboard. So while the show is going, McClure turns to me and goes, I can't fix this keyboard. We have to go buy one. Can you drive me? And now, time. We're going to run to the store really quick and try and buy a new keyboard for Sour. So we get in the car, and the show is going. Hi, Mike. Thanks for calling in at 888. Yeah, uh, Sour, are your, are your parents there? Yeah, Mr. Langford. Well, I mean, Mr. Longford, <laughs> they're in the living room watching, watching TV. This is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Radio show is happening, whether a core is there or not to produce it. And we drive off to try to find a keyboard. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus. Come on, click, click, click. It's live, man. There's no time for a break. But if we get back in, like, 12 minutes, we got another 30 minutes left in the show. If we can get one more good segment of him playing... That's cool. The show is still going, and we're speeding through the country roads, and we have to get back in time. What's up? How are you guys? You still open? Yeah. You have Casio keyboards of any kind? No. Oh, fuck. You have any keyboards at all? No. No keyboards. <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to try Goodwill. Fuck. Nothing. They got drum kits. I did notice a keyboard store up here. Do you want to <laughs> yeah, is there like, um, you know, back in those 80s, like the stores in the mall with the pianos? Let's try the keyboard district. <laughs> the keyboard district. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not 1985 and, and Radio Shack doesn't sell keyboards anymore. I'm going to say good night and thank you all for sticking with me with, through the uh, water-soaked keyboard <laughs> extravaganza. And you can order your coloring books. Do so, please, and we can color together the next time. Bye! Oh, that was nice. It was a good recovery. Sorry about all that. No, it's not your fault. It sounded really good most of the day, and then I think I may have, uh, I may have uh, fried it with, by throwing water on it <laughs> when I jumped in to catch the when I jumped in earlier, splashing every, everything in sight. Jesus Christ. It's okay. Sorry. We made it. <laughs> no need to bring the Lord into this. Sorry. And then Sour had one last request. All right, Mikey, we're going to head on out of here. Anything else we can do before we leave? Um, can you tuck me in? Only because you're such a good sport. Let's go. <laughs> really? Where are we tucking you in? Sour Shoes is a very, very talented guy. 
I don't know. I mean, he's entertaining. Okay. I think he's a savant musically. I think he's incredibly talented. Um, his knowledge of music is is unbelievable. I really enjoyed the guy. I mean, he's he's a little off, but he's very endearing. I think he's super talented, and I I I think he's a real talent. I mean, he he's a he's a really funny fella. Hi, Mikey. Have a good night. Thanks for having us out. I love you. We'll see you soon. I think Sour Shoes is an amazing talent. Yeah. Seems normal. So I interviewed Sour for the show that you're watching now, and I said to him, um, I'm going to fire off uh, people on the show and, and just do the impression. And uh, it was pretty cool. Gary. Right. Um, I mean, here's, the, here's the deal. Um, he was on the show. <laughs> I never said that about the Bush administration. Never. I wasn't a Tracy? huge Bush fan. No. Douche. I keep you now. Fred. Lumber liquidators. Uh, we probably should take a break. Hi, bitch. Well, hello. Hey, how are you? Mary, you in? Oh, that's fabulous. I love you. And Howard, Robin, I'm going to throw you a bachelorette party. Gary, the retard? And I want to come to you from Seattle because, I mean, Oregon, the city is the chicken. Hello? No, that's a rated corporate. I'm trying to talk about it. And Freddie, you! Nah, no, it's me and you shit some dope! Well, I didn't think it was funny. No, I didn't think it was funny at all, but no, I, I never said that. This is the best of the wrap up show. Wrap -up show. A recap and behind the scenes look with John High, John High. and Gary Delabate. The best of the wrap-up show begins now. Hey, it's Gary Delavante. On Monday's wrap-up show, John and I took a lot of phone calls. Not all of them were comfortable. You know, we let anybody get through, we'll answer any questions. So there were questions about whether Howard's a hypocrite, about the way he talks about J-Lo, even though you're not allowed to look him in the eye when he walks in the hallway. There were questions about Artie and how come Artie hasn't been on the show yet. So uh, we got peppered with a lot of uh, tough questions, and we answered them all. Uh, Chris in Virginia, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Um, Howard, Howard took this call from the guy today who said his wife's not had sex with him for two weeks. Right. And, you know, Howard, 10 years ago, would have gotten that guy's wife on the phone and grilled her and grilled him together and made great radio. And now, I don't know if it's 15 years of psychotherapy or he's just older and, or he just wants to get out of the building so fast. It's like he, you know, he gave that guy his little bit of psychological advice and then sent him back. And, and there could have been so much more than I don't wonder why Howard doesn't do that anymore. Well, I, I think that Howard doesn't feel that way anymore. So he's not going to he's not going to act a different way. He's definitely changed. And I think. Part of it might be his therapy, and part of it is that he's in a relationship with somebody that he really feels strongly about in that sense. But it wasn't like Howard isn't doing that because he, you know, he wants to try a different tack this week. He was being very honest this morning. Yeah, and he wasn't trying to get out of the building and end the show um, if that's where you were going. It struck me more as what Gary is saying. He's in a great place with Beth, and he looks at his relationship in a different way, and that's what he conveys, and he's not going to be dishonest about that on the air. But I had the same thought as him. I would go, man, if this were like late 80s, early 90s, he'd be like, get rid of her, you know, the whole thing. But he's different now. Derek in Providence, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, now. Hey, now. Uh, this morning, Howard was talking about um, J-Lo, and he was calling her insane because she didn't want anyone to uh, to look at her or speak to her. When it was either, I think, when she was on American Idol or some other show. And isn't that essentially the same thing Howard does each day when he has the hallways cleared and no. he doesn't allow anyone to speak to him? No, and I'll tell you the difference. Howard's, <laughs> uh, there's a big difference. Howard's like, don't bother me when I get off the show because I just want to go to my office and relax and explains that. But after you get out of our compound, it, it, Howard does have people surrounding him saying, don't look at me. Yeah, but doesn't Howard, well, I don't understand the difference, Gary. Well, the difference is because because I think somebody like J Lo has people with her all day long doing that. I I don't buy that. I mean, he's he doesn't let anyone come up to him 
even to his station, right? I mean, it's his own separate compound, so now he's out in the hallway. But the hallway itself must be cleared. That's not true. That's not, that, well, that's what he does. No, no, no. I mean, you, you're asking me a question. I'm telling you, oh. we, the, he wants the hallway cleared when he comes out of the studio so he can get to his office. He doesn't want to talk to everybody. About, and, and by the way, it's, when it's everybody, it's everybody. He doesn't want to talk to me or Tim or John Hine or anybody. He just wants to get to his office and meditate. Then when he leaves and he comes out of our compound... It's fair game. He yeah, hates but, it, but this, but nobody's clearing the hallways. Well, we or, or some of us know to leave him alone, but it's not like avert your eyes. Here comes, you know, <laughs> right. that's that's. And there's a big dictated. difference between Howard and J Lo. We don't work for J Lo. <laughs> <laughs> so. But but you can understand, like he did call her insane, and I'm listening this morning saying, "Well, you're calling her insane." It sounds like to me, as a fan, as a listener, it sounds exactly the same. I mean, to you guys, it's different because you're in that environment. I grew up with this insanity, so it's perfectly normal to me. All right. When, any chance of getting Artie on the show? Well, I think I would address that last week. I didn't hear it. Uh, you should go back and listen to it. I don't know. I don't know. It's, well, I'm sure it's online. So, but Howard, Howard sort of, he talked about after Artie was on Letterman that um, he doesn't think he's ready and it got into a whole thing. What's your opinion? Uh, I defer to Howard. Howard's got to do the interview. One other thing, Gary, like, you know, like I'm a big fan of the show, Larry Sanders and, and Artie on the show there. He's clearly the boss of the show as the executive producer. As you being the executive producer of the Howard Stern show, do you feel you have that same role as an Artie role or more of a role as an executive assistant? Somewhere in the middle. I mean, the, 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 the executive producer of the Howard Stern show is Howard Stern. He, okay. you know, he's, he, he, Inevitably, most important decisions are made by him, or I go to him and I we'll talk together, and he appreciates my opinion. But if I say no, this is the way I want to do it, he says no, that's the way I want to do it. Howard's going to win. Thanks, Derek. Let's go over to Dan in Cincinnati. Dan, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey guys, I want to go back to what uh, you were talking about a little bit ago. Howard during the show mentioned that uh, Beth was the love of his life, and I always wondered about that because you know Allison married him when nobody gave a shit about him. How, how can Allison not be the true love of his life? And I've always wanted to get an honest answer out of him about that. It's hard for somebody to be the love of your life if you're not with them now. Yeah, but you know it's easy. I mean, to you, hide. just because they were in love at one time doesn't mean that Beth can't be the love of his life now. Uh. It's easy to get a, a, a Beth when you're Howard Stern now. As no, but Dan, I think you're trying to tell Howard how he feels. Oh, I know, I understand that, but it, if he, I think if he really thought about it, who gave it? Who cared about him when he was a nobody? I'm going to go tomorrow and tell him to think about it a little bit harder because <laughs> Dan from Cincinnati doesn't like the answer. Well, let me ask you about the, something the last caller said. Sure. Now he mentioned Artie, and you know Howard, you know he likes to play it coy about Artie and act like he doesn't exist and he I remember last year you said on the air that Artie wanted to come on the show and tell everybody everything and I thought sure it was going to happen but it never did and Howard obviously put the kibosh on it I don't understand why well I think Howard talked about it on the air several times I mean we don't act like Artie doesn't exist and somebody called and asked about it that morning and Howard talked about how he thought Artie was very funny on Letterman but when Artie wanted to come on it was like he was still in treatment and our feeling was especially Howard's feeling was that this wasn't might not be a great place for him to be if he's trying to get better. Yeah, and I thought Howard gave a pretty clear answer last week about that. He said just that, you know, this isn't the best place for Artie necessarily as Artie's working on himself. And somebody even said to Howard, like, uh, well, Letterman had him on. It's like Letterman didn't have the same relationship with him that I had. Coming here is, is a very different thing. Jim and Philly, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, what's up, man? I have a couple things I want to uh, say, but um, I went for a tour of the studio about a couple years ago, and Howard had to leave the studio like twice, and both times Ronnie... The asshole shut the door on us, and then when Howard came back, he reopened the door. So is that the same thing that guy was talking about before on the phone? Um, wait, wait, I'm confused. I know what he's talking about. He's, he's he was, like he ignoring us. It's like it's like saying fuck. You know, we're his fans, and he, he shut the door on us. We can't even see him. Yeah, but you were. What were you doing here? What 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 was your we reason? Were, we were uh, for a tour of the studio, but we were waiting in the green room. Yeah, when Howard goes by, he he does. You know, here's the problem. I don't think he minds you seeing him. The problem is if he's trying to get from A to B and then you get up and you go, hey, can I take a picture? Here's a book. Remember the time we were in Philly? I saw you. I've got this thing. Then Howard's not going to say get out of my way. He's trying to get – the show has just ended. He said it a million times. I'm just trying to get to my office and decompress. Eh, it's just that he's trying to – the same thing as he complains about other people doing. You know, ignoring fans or just means you're – Well, I uh, mean, when you get right off the show, and other, I, I think with anybody when they get right off the show, they're not looking to meet people. 
Well, even when he was walking the halls after the show, like, you know, we all had to hide. Why'd you hide? I put, well, we were in the green, actually went on the, uh, we were coming into the, uh, your show, the wrap-up show, and somebody made us move to the side, and he walked by, <laughs> and we had to go on the show. I don't know, it just sounded like the same <laughs> shit. And I have one more thing, though, I wanted to say. Sure. Um, this sounded like this morning, Howard's getting annoyed at Robin for just constantly cutting into a conversation, like, louder than him, and right in the middle of what Howard was saying. He, she just cut right in, especially in the beginning of the show. I, I didn't, it just I mean, seemed like Howard was getting like pissed off, but he, you know, just, just the way he like came back, he would talk even louder. I, I like, noticed that it was. I think it was about the Occupy Wall Street yeah. discussion. And uh, yeah, I just think Howard didn't thought Robin has a silly point of view about that. All right, thanks, Jim. Uh, Jason in Manhattan, you're on the wrap up show. How you doing, guys? Big fan. Thanks. Um, I don't know. I, I see that there's uh, there might be a uh, a crack in the facade between the the bromance. Between you guys, I don't know. Uh, you guys, uh, you guys still in love with each other? I don't know. You guys sound like you might be getting on each other's nerves. Wait, are you talking about John and I? Yeah, probably you and John. Uh, not in love, but still very good friends. We spoke <laughs> over the weekend. Um, but what what do you think is the crack? What 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 are you hearing that makes it sound like John and I have uh, something going on? Um, I, I don't know. I, I feel like uh, you know he'll say something, and you'll have to say something that tops him just a little bit, and. You know, you see, I, I hear a little animosity in John's voice. Oh, know? that. Yeah, yeah, that. I didn't know I was that transparent. <laughs> no, we still get along fine. I mean, you get, I, you, if you give me a better example, I would totally address it. Because right now you're just going off a tone of voice. Um, oh, come on, Gary. <laughs> but you'll see, like, again, when you wa- if you watch Howard TV, you know, John and I still look at each other when we talk. <laughs> so on Tuesday's wrap-up show, uh, the guys got on Benji a little bit. Um, for basically being, how Gary put it, seastruck uh, with a girl that he might not be getting with romantically ever. Um, and then I came in a little bit later, sympathized with them. And uh, yeah, that's it. Benji impresses a girl by jumping into that CNN broadcast, which was really funny, but says he doesn't care if he ever hooks up with her, and I'm calling it's, it's, bullshit on that. We were just talking to Benji during the break, and we were saying how Marianne, who called today, used to intern for us. Marianne's very cute. And I said to Benji, I know that you were playing sort of the Al Roker model. If I just hang around right. long enough, she'll see what a good guy I am. And she, did, she, she thought he was a great guy. But she just didn't want to fuck him. Yeah, but she did want to make out with Booker at the party. Oh, my God. <laughs> the cat That's the funniest story ever. She, Benji's putting in the time, putting in the time. She goes in the bathroom, and Booker goes meow, and she makes out with him. That is so great. That's, but it, that's it's, the a story. Wor- it's the worst, though. I felt it, so bad for him. It's 16 Candles, Pretty in Pink. Oh, All those movies rolled into one. Every John Hughes movie happened right to Benji. <laughs> so, uh, Benji, you were involved quite a bit in the show today. Yeah. Was it hard to hear Marianne tell that story about what no. happened with Booker? Oh, Mar- no, no, that was like, literally, that was like, I think, 12 years ago. But the point was, it hurt at the time. Oh, my God, yeah. I was, um, I had a huge, we've become, you know, you know, we've become super close. We're mm-hmm. very good friends for life. We're, she's one of my best friends. And But there was a period of time where oh, you yeah, had would, a romantic I, love I for I cried her. about it. I, I think I got counseling, of, like, you know, how to, like, all, I tried everything. And the, the truth is, she loves me, too. She'll tell you that. Like, she absolutely loves me. As a friend. Yeah, I, actually a little more than that, maybe. But, like, but she, you know, she might... Do, I don't know if she's going to call up or anything like that. Now, you're not in a relationship right now, right? No. And she's not either. Uh, she date. I no, she's not. So even... So no, now it's... Both dating, but, but now it's but been yeah. down the road, and she still sees what a good guy you are, and still no chance of it. Like, it's no chance that it would ever happen. You wouldn't mind if it happened, would you? I'm... I'm sexually attracted to her, but that's I'm also sexually attracted to your wife, to your <laughs> wife, to I'm sure whoever he dates. The vacuum over there. Yeah. So, but but yeah, I find her sexually attractive, and I love her, and she loves me, and we we know we have that connection. But I don't have that romantic kind of feeling towards her, and I definitely don't have any kind of sad crush towards her. Well, it sounds like with the girl you're with now, or trying to be I, with now, yeah, it's, you're gonna hang in there no matter what. The reason I brought her up is. It, I'm not. I think she, there's something fascinating about her, and she, she. I think she's an amazingly talented person. But don't you think there's a and, part of you? That and says, I think it's a funny thing too. The right, whole asexual. It's a funny bit to bring up on the air, 
But the best thing that could happen is in this funny bit, somehow you get laid. It works out for everybody. It's not just – it's really – I swear my life, it's not just to get laid. Like, but it wouldn't hurt. I'm not – I don't think of her like that. Like, I, I, I find her very sexually attractive, but it's like she, she possesses a quality that I'm like, wow, this is the kind of girl – whether it's her or someone else that that I want to marry. Yeah, she's you're sea struck. What's that? You're 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 struck by the vagina. Oh, you're in lust because you don't really I'm know. I'm brain her. struck, be struck. Have you ever felt this way about anyone else? Yeah, I've had other girls in my life that have had aspects of this. I, obviously, like uh, girls I've dated, and some like uh, Marianne has has those qualities. There's people in my life I've met like that. Like Sheila had those qualities. There's people in my life that I've met. Uh, there's a girl Tracy you've met, like that I've dated, that have Charlie that have amazing qualities. Uh, what's your wife's name again? Debbie. And when, yeah, Debbie. You, and when you did the CNN thing, yeah, that was to impress this girl. Yeah, yeah, because I like I've told you guys I've had to completely stop doing that because I don't believe in it. It's like uh, I feel like um, there's this, you know it's a, there's a slight immorality to it. Then why'd you do it? I, I want her to like me. So you think she's gonna like you more because she definitely he, did. She loved it. So do you think she's falling for your celebrity and not the true you that you are? No, nah, she likes who I am, but she likes cele- for sure she likes celebrity too. But um no, she liked she just she thought it was ballsy and she thought it was funny and she got a kick out of it. Now, did you guys talk about on the air earlier that she was in that band? No. I n- n- very little her, I'll just I'll say her name so people aren't. Her name's Elisa Jordana. But what yeah. band was she in? Cobra Starship. Now, they had some huge hits, right? You know the band? Do you know the band Cobra Starship? No. They've had the hits one plays them a lot. Did, did they have that? Hel- were they the Helen Keller song, or am I thinking of a different band? There's a song about Helen Keller. Oh yeah, you don't know about that one? No. It's it's just a ridiculous. Are they suit. doing like the noises? Should like, I know who Cobra Starship is? Yeah, they've had a couple of hits on Hits One. You should know in the sense like if you listen to Hits One and your daughters listen to them, they would probably know. But she's not. She wasn't in the band for the hits. What happened to her in the band? She she got out of it. But- she left or she got thrown out. I, I think it was a it was a I don't know how much she wants to go into it, but it's like from what I know, like it, I think they they dig their over. It seems like she to originated like the guitar in that band, but I'm talking about her as a solo right performer. Is her songs every fucking song is like so catchy and so good. Now you might not like that genre, but it's it's like. When I said, is Katy Perry good? Is Lady Gaga good? It's that good. Her name's Elisa Giordano. Yeah, you said that. It no, seemed, yes. It, it, seemed, it seemed today, though, you were making a point to make sure that she was booked on the show. Well, she's already been booked. I, none of us remember. I mean, Gary. No, you, I do. I, Benji's right. How, Benji brought it up in a meeting, and Howard's like, Booker. Don't you remember we were in the meeting? You might not have been in the meeting because you were doing a wrap-up show, but Benji actually had somebody play the music from the board while we were in the meeting, and Howard didn't even really care about the music. It was more sort of like, I met this girl. I think her music's really good. She says she's asexual, which is why she wanted to have sex with me. Howard goes Booker. <laughs> but it's not like there's something. I'll, you guys will see. You know, I, I know I'm probably, maybe I'm hyping. It, maybe it seems like I'm hyping. You definitely hyped her up. I mean, this person has an amazing quality. And you'll, be, you'll, you'll say, this is a, someone that we're, we're seeing before she's becoming super famous. Oh, well, I, I hope you're right. For your sake. And for, for whoever she ends up And dating. for her sake, too. Yeah, whoever <laughs> she ends up. But Howard seemed very skeptical that she's actually asexual. Well, I am, too. I find that fascinating. Like, I've read about it. Like, like psych- psychologically, there's been, like, articles about it that there are people that don't have or have very little sex. I think you might be, in fact, from, like, what I, I don't know. But I've, you know, you might be an asexual person. I don't think I am. You might not be. I don't know. But you don't masturbate. So, so that, that to me. That is, doesn't mean I don't have sex. Do you really love it when you have it? Of course. Okay. Well, she has told me she doesn't. Like, she, it's not what it's about for her. With you. Exactly. That's, you know that's I, the point we're trying to make. Here's what I think of. I think no, of, I believe that th- is possible. I think, you know, look, I absolutely know she might. She didn't use, like I said, she didn't use the word asexual. When I started talking to her about sex and hooking up and. She seems like she's not into it. And I even said to her, is that cool? Can I, like, that's fascinating to me. Can I bring that up? Like, she, you know, yeah. she knows I See, work here and everything. This, and to her, it's not that fascinating, but she really doesn't seem to have a strong. I think of there's a classic scene and line in that movie when Harry met Sally, when she finds out that the guy that she's been dating forever, who said he didn't want to get married, gets married. Yeah. And she goes, I, I always thought he didn't want to get married. And I realized he just didn't want to marry me. 
You know, that's, I think that she likes sex. Uh, no, well, she's may not yeah, like it with you. That's what I would think, too. It's hard for me to believe. It's like, I've, I've talked to her about it. It's like, it's like, it would be like someone's telling me, like, yeah, I don't really like food that much. Actually, Robin has said that, I think. <laughs> but, like, I, it's hard for me to believe because sex to me is so much fun. I don't, whether it's a psychological reason or a biological reason, I don't think she does right now. And well, what about but the po- she might be bullshitting me. She might just be saying that to be. I was going to say, what about the possibility that she does love sex? She just doesn't want to have it with you. Absolutely possible. Are, are you pretty convinced that she's because she's not having sex with you that she's not having sex no, with anyone? No, 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 no. I think she's not attracted to me. No, but do you think she's? Do you think she's having sex with other people? Yeah, she's had sex in her whole no, life. No, but you think right now? No, I don't think she's having. You, sex you, now. I don't think she is. Because that would be weird, right? Then you would be no, like, "No, we're not dating." But it would be weird for you to say that she she doesn't want to have sex with you because I think even she's she, not into sex, but then she'd be having sex with I someone else. I believe her when she, I don't think she's. I don't know why, but I don't think she's that. I don't think I don't think she looks at sex in the way I do and you do right now. But even Marianne had a funny joke this morning when she said, uh, "Howard said, did you tell Benji that you were asexual?" She's like, "No, that's a good one. I told her that's <laughs> yeah, a good no, one." No, Marianne loves sex. Marianne and I have talked about it, like. Is she really, like, just, you know, doesn't like sex that much? One last question, then we're going to go to break. But that's not why she's not into me. She's also, she's not into sex, but also not into me physically. So, so it's like, if, like I was, double whim. if I were into sex, it wouldn't be with you. Right. <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> Ouch. No, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> On both levels. No, but, but I'm telling you, it's... But you said today you're, you're, putting in the, you're putting in the time, and you said no, today... No, I'm not putting in the time. Hold on, let me finish. To, okay. You don't care if anything happens with her physically. If you don't have a relationship, you just enjoy her. She's your friend. Stuff like well, no one puts in the time like that, Benji, I'm without not, hoping for of a sexual I payoff. Hope. Like this is someone that I'm like, wow, I am like blown away by. And yes, this is definitely someone I'd want to date. But I don't feel maybe as vulnerable as I used to be. That I would get in like this devastating crush about it. I I appreciate her qualities. I want to be around them. If I if I if it doesn't work out with her, it's gonna work out with someone else. Now joined by J.D. Harmeyer, who's another big part of today's show, when Howard was talking about the effect puberty had on him. Big part. And, well, he spent, you were in there for the whole Seacrest rap, and he kept talking to you about how tough it is, you know, growing up a certain way, and I want to know if that was true. Did you feel like you were sort of an outcast or ugly kid growing up? Uh, I've never felt like it, I've ever been attractive. I mean, I've had, like, girlfriends... Uh, yeah, well, uh, I mean, like, uh, what was it? Um, I think sixth grade. I had, you know, girlfriends, but after that, nothing. Did you win the spelling bee that year? That's the year I won the spelling bee. <laughs> so, and so, the girlfriend I was going out with at the time came and showed up. The peak. Yeah. She didn't show up to the spelling bee. No, she did. A couple friends. Wow. So sixth grade was the magical year. Yeah, I think her name was Natalie Spencer. <laughs> I don't, think I don't know. Oh, how, you? I'm sure you remember. Uh, I, I I remember as Natalie. Can I? Like, how far did you go with Natalie? I I didn't go very far with. I didn't go far with anyone. But did you uh, guys? I mean, I don't know what you. What no, you, nothing. Nothing happened. But were you like? How do you know she was your girlfriend? Like, did you guys say we're girlfriend boyfriend? Yeah, I, it, it was. Uh, you know, yeah. elementary school for Christ's sake. You know. But so. had, how? Like, how did you guys say we're girlfriend boyfriend? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, what happened? High five. Uh, I don't. I don't remember. I think she broke up with me for. He got all you, famous from Get Smart. Yeah. <laughs> hey, no, that was that was actually uh, high school, and uh, I did not get famous from that at all. I would think you'd remember if you broke up with her versus her broken, breaking up with you. Uh, I don't remember. Now, when you heard that story that Marianne told today about Benji ending up with, uh, you know, making out with Booker, and after <laughs> Benji put in all that time, did you did you feel for him? Were you sympathetic? <laughs> yeah, at all? of course. Yeah. Have I you mean, been in that situation at all? Did uh, Natalie make out with Booker? I mean, I can't think of a specific example, but I'm sure, like, you know, there I, I've definitely liked girls that have not liked me in that same way and then seeing them, go, you know, be with someone else. It sucks. You, you just you want to punch a hole in the wall. <laughs> but do you hold on? Do you, do you keep sticking with it, or do you just cut bait? <sighs> uh, it depends. I mean, you, I, I, try to, I try to cut bait once, you know, I know nothing's, nothing's going to happen ever, but... We we hold on to this dream, you know. I was telling Lisa G this. We hold on to this dream that one day, maybe, and then but then you know I cut, you just set yeah, yourself I, up for I, I had the bait eight years into her marriage. No, but I know I know what JD's saying because I've been where JD is, and you're like, I I feel the same way. Like, okay, I know I'm not the best looking guy, but if I spend enough time, <laughs> she'll no, she'll see that I'm a good person. Something like that. I, I mean, it's it's not. 
it, and they never do. Yeah, <laughs> I just never <laughs> like I've never had anybody that I felt that way about go after a long time go. Wow, I, I see what I haven't seen before. But I mean, I don't know if we can get Lisa in here, but like, you know, she'll say, you know what, I'm really looking for a nice guy who, but the bottom line is the, the looks come first in right. a lot of cases. Well, and- it, it's, it's, not, it's, it, it's not always just looks. I mean, looks are definitely a big part, but it's also, you know, where you are in life, how successful you are, and what you know? Oh, shoot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, I don't make a lot of money here, so. Do you think it's all about money? I, I wouldn't say it's all about money, but uh, no. I, See, you, I'm just, no, I'm just saying that's that helps. I mean, you're in, you're in better shape than a guy who makes your salary elsewhere because you got a little juice going on as JD from the Howard Stern show. Yeah, there true. is that fame. That's true. Offer. Well, well, listen, I don't be humble. The fame. <laughs> first of all, there's hardly any fame. Uh, it's like you know, it's not a big thing. There was I w- was I told this story recently. Where I went out to a bar, and there were some college chicks there, and this guy tried to introduce me to him. He was like, "Yeah, he works for the Howard Stern Show." And they were like, "Ah, oh, <laughs> yeah, cool." Yeah, but you graduated college twelve years ago. Well, I'm just saying, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, oh, whatever. So, what was your move after you got introduced? I didn't. Have, they didn't. They was like, "All right, okay." And they went and talked to themselves. Well, did you yeah. try to talk to them? Did I didn't you? know what. The, I don't remember. Uh, I I think I said something, but uh, you know. But again, he, we can get off into a whole other side conversation. You're waiting for somebody to go. Oh my God, Howard Stern, he's uh, the best. No, Let me fuck you. I, no, no, no. I wasn't saying that. That though, though, that would be nice. <laughs> 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 You know, has that ever happened? Has that ever happened? Uh, I mean, not, uh, I don't know, like, not really. No, JD, <laughs> I mean, like, I know it's happened. Well, to like, okay, like, you know, through Facebook or whatever. Yeah, I mean, right. in, in the case, yeah, but, uh, uh, no, I, I mean, as far as like, they've never heard the show and <laughs> they hear that and then they, they want to fuck you immediately. No. I don't know. My friend worked at NBC, and he used to get chicks from the request line back before there was the internet. I would think for you, it would be very easy with the internet now. Well, it's 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 definitely been easier. Um, I'm just you know, I don't know. Well, I think uh, I think you're definitely on the right path, and and hopefully <laughs> you won't experience that I'm sixth trying. grade breakup or yeah. any of that other stuff that's yeah, happened. Have you looked up Natalie on Facebook? Oh, I've definitely looked up uh, girls. Yeah. The one, I, I can't. You can't find them though. The one that got away. Well, like the easier ones are from high school, uh, because I mean these are from elementary school back in Ohio, and like I wouldn't. Re- well, you, maybe someone could find Natalie nah, Spencer. It doesn't matter. Just, who knows? Ohio. Right. Who knows what she's doing now? Wednesday's wrap-up show was all about who the biggest whore is, and Debbie was the big winner, and we found out how she came to the show. That was through Sal, and Sal came down and explained himself. And that's really all I have to say. Let's move off of that and off of Robin and on to the three women who did come in today to compete in the biggest horror contest. All three were extremely qualified and the vote came in and Debbie was the winner. She beat out Abby and Beth. And I thought that it would be closer. You know, Debbie really got a lot of the votes, and I guess her stories about what she does with sperm is what put her over the top. Yeah, it was interesting. It, it, there was a, if you were just listening to it, you know, Debbie just like says, I got to blow people three times a day. I thought, who was the middle girl? Abby. Abby. I thought Abby spoke about it also with such sort of, with such a cavalier attitude. Yeah, I met a guy. We did Ive Tower. You know, we went there. I met these two guys last night. I thought they were all really convincing. But, you know, to take sperm and ask to, to be frozen, <laughs> to tell guys to jerk off at a condom and give it to her, that sets her apart. What for a, me. Well, what about Beth, who's having strangers come over and the kids are asleep upstairs and she's banging them there? I mean, Unprotected, by the way. Yeah, that's pretty rough too. Yeah, I thought I, lo- I love. I love the whole. Uh, yeah, you know, she goes. We have. I have a way to know. And so we go. What's today? She goes. You know, we have them tested. And Howard goes. They bring a piece of paper. She's like, yeah, most of the time. What was the most shocking thing you heard today from any of the contestants? Like you were like, wow. I think when Debbie talked about ha- you know having people save up there, yeah. th- Howard was like, I'm out. Like he couldn't right. even deal with that. He tapped was, out. Was there anything else there that really uh, shook you? How about you, Benji? You've heard some of this stuff before, I'm sure. Well, I'm going to go back to one thing to the last thing. that that The thing that took it away from me for Abby is that 
she said she has to be orally pleased to give a, a blowjob. Mm-hmm. So I, I think I took it away from her. Um, what, what shocked me? I, See, don't know, other, I, but... I, I, I don't think, to me, it was the thing we've already just said, like like freezing the sperm and, I don't know, mailing it to well, her. Well, you, had you heard of the IFE before? Ha- I feel I have heard of an Eiffel Tower before, but I, I did, had to think about it for a second. We used to call that telephone. You know, one in the mouthpiece, one in the receiver. But also, I don't know if that implies the guys are kissing to make a triangle. I don't know. Yeah, it was a whole weird thing. She said it like every, everybody knew what it was. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, I see. I got you. The guys high five, and that's how you get the Eiffel Tower. Um, the other thing, too, is the other two girls were really young. So it was almost like, you know, Tony Gwynn was competing with, you know, <laughs> Rookie of the Year. Like, they were 21. In 10 years, they're going to have even more stories. But uh, Debbie is in her 40s, and she's been doing it a long time. Well, I thought Beth also, she started off saying her marriage was, you know, pretty normal, nothing really crazy going on. And then they talked about opening up the marriage a little bit, and the husband gets off on what she does. And, you know, that made for a unique pitch, I thought. Today was one of those great contests, that, and you always hope for it to go that way. You never know exactly how it's going to go, where the first person comes out, and you go, well, that's pretty good. You know, that's going to be hard to beat. And then the second person comes out, and you go, oh, we have a contest here. And then the third person comes out, and you go, holy shit. You know, because sometimes it's, it's a little unbalanced. Today was a very balanced group. Hey, Mike. Hey, what's going on, guys? How you doing? Love the show. Thanks. What's on your mind? Um, Gary, I sent you a, a, an email. I was just wondering, um, to make the contest like a little bit more realistic, and I think that's what every, uh, all the, the male fans are going for, is there any way to maybe like next year to keep the two whores like isolated? So this way, because everybody has done that, like ta- uh, telling somebody a story, and then somebody jumps in with even a bigger story just because it's there. I don't, I mean, know, I don't know what you're saying. I mean... The, isolate them how you like don't let them hear what the person before them said exactly so this way if they because if you have the two words there it's like oh man that's a pretty good story i'm gonna have to embevel this one just to make me look like a bigger whore yeah, but mike i don't think debbie was changing her story whether yeah. she heard the previous two or not we, we debbie's story was exactly what she said in her original letter to us which was exactly what she told will in the pre-interview yeah i was gonna say uh you, the pre-interview notes if you if you read them from will uh they were crazy and all their stories were pretty much in line and man I think if they told a crazier story on air that wasn't in the notes, we'd assume they were making it up. Right. Why wouldn't you say that to Will? I, I, the stu- I mean, I, I didn't go back and cross-check, cross-reference everything, but I think uh, pretty much in line with what You don't think the, the semen popsicles was like a last minute? Just like- <laughs> I freeze it. I freeze it. <laughs> Big Al, you're on the wrap-up show. Question. Big oh, Al. Great. Hello? Yeah, hey, what's up, Al? Yeah, yeah, so- uh, you know what? We got to get rid of Al. Yeah, sorry, Al. But Al said, "How did you find Debbie?" And we solicited for the contest, and she wrote us. Will said that he's been trying to get Debbie on the show in some way, in a, for a while. So I, I think we solicited for the other people, but we knew <laughs> that Debbie would oh, fill out for a, uh, the biggest whore. She might have just written us before the contest started, which yes. makes her even better. Exactly. That's, the girl, that's, that's what the... I mean. She's more of a, a true whore. <laughs> Producer Will Murray. Will yes. a caller before asked how. Uh, we found Debbie, but how did we find all the contestants for the contest? Uh, well, everybody submitted uh, an, an entry form for this, uh, but Debbie, we had, had come to our attention earlier through Sal, if you believe it or not. He was friends with a dirty, filthy whore. Sal? Somebody, oh, that's right. Sal said he had known her before and had urged her to enter, and then I got a te- I got an IM during the contest from somebody over TV that said, how much you want to bet Sal Siemens in her freezer? <laughs> oh, yeah. I will bet anything. Do you, think, do you think that Sal would get off, like, in other words, yes. he can't fuck her because he's married. Do you think Sal could sexually get off on the fact of jerking off and giving it to her, knowing that she would drink it? Yes. Do you think that H- works for him? 100%. I don't know what works for Sal. <laughs> that would get Gary, off. He, was, he gets but, off on Debbie the Queefer's panties hanging in his office. I think he loves a girl that will submit to anything. Would, well, ben, would ben, your you, wives get mad at that? If you yes. That? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, Benji, you've done some crazy stuff. Would you do that if she asked you to jerk off? And, and I wouldn't get anything out of it. I mean, like to you mail get to jerk or. Off. I mean, yeah, yeah. She couldn't take it if you jerked off immediately and froze it and gave it to her. She couldn't take it and use if it. If a to get real pregnant. hot chick was in front of me, is like saying, "Oh my God, I gotta, I gotta, like." Swallow your cum. I guess that would that would do it. But just to like to go to the trouble of freezing it and then figuring out a way to ship it to her, that that would be you know too much. But well, these were three well qualified whores. Oh, they were great. I mean, I don't know if everyone liked the contest, but I thought you know I thought uh, Beth was a home run with the, with the, uh, the 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 husband stories. Mm-hmm. And I don't even even know if we got into the full extent of that because one of the things she told me during the pre interview 
is that her husband gets like she lets the guys come inside of her, and then she likes the husband to have sex with her while the other guy's load is still inside. She of her. mentioned it. They didn't go deep into it, but yeah, she did mention I mean, that the husband will bang her. Is that some sick that, shit? Is that her thing or his? That's thing? That's his thing. That's the but husband's she's, thing. But she's up to help him out. Yeah, I mean, it didn't even sound like it was really an open marriage. It was like, I'm just going to whore my wife out. Right. Hey, Sal, Will hey. says that Debbie came to us through you. Debbie actually Facebooked me about a year ago, and she just wanted me to get together with her. She wanted to, fly, I think, fly <laughs> me out to Florida and have me come for her. And I, I let her, I made was her. Was she going to pay you? Uh, no, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember the specifics. I, I was so blown away by that particular solicitation. I've never had that before. And at first I thought, hey, this is somebody roping me in. You know, I work on the Stern Show. Somebody's <laughs> playing me. a joke on me. So, you know, I, I treaded lightly. I said, well, you know, what else do you do? And she said she, was a, she, had, she had a cum fascination. And I said, yeah, well, why don't you show me a, a few of those uh, cum fascination pictures? And those came through. And then she said, I just had a guy... Uh, I just cut open eight condoms and drank them, and I'm like, all right, let's see that. And sure enough, she sent that, and that's when I said, hey, you know what? This girl could be great for the show. Yeah, she sent us a picture of a table covered with uh, cut condoms. That yeah. Just, uh, see, like 15 of them on this right. table. See, this is my worst fear, and you know what I'm about to say, John, yes. that Sal gets to be the creepy guy he is under the guise of doing research for the show. It's for the show. In other words, if he would have done this when he was a stockbroker, he probably would have been fired. Right, right. But here... He's a star. He's a star. Going back to the beginning... Which Which is actually very good. It's beneficial. The girl emailed me. She sent me the pictures. I forwarded it to Will, the segment producer, and she became the biggest pro in the world. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. The way you started started explaining the story, she wasn't looking to come on the show. Right, she wasn't. It was a private correspondence between you and her, So, and then you're exchanging these pictures in a private way, and then you decided she might be good (laughs) for the show. I thought I was being roped into a scam. She sent in the Were we going to call the FBI, do a sting operation? No, 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 no. I thought she like could... you... Listen, whenever somebody emails me in any capacity, I work for the show. I think, hey, could this possibly be good for the show? I'm obviously not going to go out there mm. and ejaculate on this girl as much as I'd like to. Don't get me wrong. Obviously. Well, but the thing is that once she followed through, uh, I, sent, I forwarded everything to Will. But that was the question we had. If she said, hey, Sal... Would you jerk off for me and send it to me? I'll hold on to it and then use it down the road. Would you do something like that? And does something like that sort of get you off? It wouldn't get. I mean, the only time I would get off is actually jacking off. And you know, that's be- no. That wouldn't get just to pass it off to somebody. No, that, that would. Well, no, she's going to drink right. it and think of you. And the fact that she drinks it and and thinks of me, that's a little hot. It's it's so creepy and so disturbing that it's hot. But uh, I don't know. It's it's a tough one. It's a fifty fifty. Do you think it's the kind of thing that your wife will be upset about? Because t- you're doing something here and sending it there. You're not in the same room. There's no physical contact. You know, she probably would be upset, but the thing is that, think about this, you go to sperm banks, right? And you're creating life out of it. So there is pleasure that comes out of that. So you are jacking off, you are putting your semen into into a container, the semen's going into something else, life is being created, people are being happy. So what's the difference? I put my semen in a condom, I ship it off, I'm happy, she's happy. Same thing, but there's no pain in the ass kid that's being born out of it. But Actually, it's more beneficial. But she's a little different than a sperm bank, Sal. What? She's a little different than a sperm bank. Yeah, she's taken in her mouth versus a vagina. That's the difference. One hole versus the other. What is the difference? I guess, uh, listen, Sal's making a little sense. What's the difference between <laughs> jerking off and handing the girl a doggy bag of your semen and jerking off at the booths that you go to? I mean, you're still jerking off in front of a chick. I personally don't find that super duper hot. I'd rather have full-blown sex, you know, and oral. Well, but <laughs> if the fact that this girl does it, it's it's interesting. It's interesting enough that she's the world's biggest whore. So she's doing something right. Yeah, I think I th- it's more interesting than hot. Yeah, I would agree. I think we got our answer, Gary. I do, too. All right. This is the best of the wrap-up show. A recap and behind-the-scenes look with John Hyde and Gary Delabate. 
The best of the wrap-up show begins now. Hey, it's Sal Governale, and on Monday's wrap-up show, we discuss my past family life, all the crazy things that I've been through, and we also discuss, could I possibly pull off a Ponzi scheme without my wife knowing? It got pretty crazy, but then, of course, old fart grandpa Ronnie Mund had to uh, stroll into the room, for lack of a better word, and uh, take over talking about his red carpet shenanigans. Who, who the fuck would want that old bastard on a red carpet? I don't know. See for yourself. So, G-Man, <laughs> Howard was talking today about, uh, oh, Robin, I think, brought up the Ruth Madoff story, and they both th- said that she was completely unaware of what was going on with her husband, Bernie Madoff, and I guess he brought you in uh, to illustrate how sometimes a wife can be unaware of what's going on with the husband, meaning your mom, and what was going on with your dad. Right. Is it difficult for you to talk about those times when you're talking about how you were brought up and dealing with both families? Uh, when I was younger, it was really difficult. I, I didn't speak to anybody about it. Uh, it was more embarrassing that other people made me aware of my father's other lifestyle. But I find it weird even now. Like, where's your dad now? Uh, he's home now, but he's leaving. Well, he just came back from Sicily. But how long was he there? For about six months. And so what? And you put your mom's here, right? Right. So what is he doing in Sicily for six months? We don't ask. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, uh, really? He, he's working on shipping wine in, and he says it's actually coming here. I, I saw him yesterday. He said it's coming here, uh, I think, on the 11th of November. He has a whole container of wine coming in. So he's getting involved in the wine distributorship business. Yeah, you gave me a bottle of wine two years ago. You go, my father's getting in the wine business. That's the last I saw of it. That's, that's the last I saw of it as well. I think my father hooked up with a wine guy, got a few bottles of wine. He's in the wine business. I, I, I certainly hope that's the case. Because he's 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 been pressing this wine for the past two years, and now this this uh, container of wine is supposedly coming in. Now, do you think most wives are unaware of what their husbands are up to? Um, no, not most. I don't know. I think it's important to stay on top of your spouse, on top of your husband or wife. You know, I wish I would have in the past a little bit more. Uh, Literally, yeah, yeah, <laughs> both. Uh, Man, it's important to stay on top of your spouse. Uh, no, but that's not but the question. Our wives, um, especially of our parents' generation. Definitely not. Definitely. I don't think, you know, my mother did her thing. My dad did his thing. He went to work. She stayed at home, took care of the kids in the house. And that was that. A lot of times my dad would come home and go, I have to go to Arizona this weekend. He would just leave for Arizona. And, then and come, your mother would never say why? He'd go to open up a business. What kind of business? Uh, or did it ever get that far? Uh, I don't think it did a lot of times. You know, we went to Sicily one time. We're driving. I'm in Naples. My dad, we puts us all in the car. He goes, we have to go visit my cousins in Sicily. We're driving like for six hours. We get on the boat. Then we go over the bridge and we're driving. We're driving. All of a sudden he stops. There's this huge rock. He reaches underneath it, pulls out a garbage bag, puts it in the trunk and keeps going. Nobody in the car says a word. <laughs> we just know not to. It's just weird like that now do you think in your relationship i mean we've been down the 143 road i don't want to go there but yeah there do you think like do you make christine aware of everything that you're doing i'm not talking about cheating or anything like that but i mean more like you know work stuff or you know if you're going away or whatever like does she want to keep tabs on where you are in the beginning i did a lot but you know now i come home and she's like what happened today at work and i said nothing you know it's just, just the same old thing and she says why do you get so uptight when i ask you about work i go because if i bring something up we're going to get into an argument and you're you know you don't know the whole story and but what do you mean what, what would you argue about at work well let's say like my sex life sucks you know something like that and uh, but, but i mean when she says went on to work today you'd say oh we had this comedian on she used to be on last comic stand and she's pretty funny she did the roast you don't yeah, like, somewhat. You know, but you know, I'm tired. I don't want to talk. I've been talking all day. I've been working all day. No, you're just tired of talking to her. <laughs> well, I'm not. Yeah, but maybe, you are. Maybe a little bit. So, you know, it got to the point because I don't bring up uh, your work anymore because you don't want to talk about it. And, and do you uh, say to her, "Would you do all day?" No. Does she tell you about her day anyway? Yeah, I do ask her from time to time. You know, we do talk about it. But what's, I mean, what am I going to hear? She went to Target. She bought bottled water. She stopped and got her hair done. She was, uh, you know, talking to her girlfriends. It, it's. I got to tell you, we sit at the dinner table every night and. Yeah. I, you know, I, it's not like I'm like, you know, uh, the teacher, like, what did you do? What did you do? I'll be like, Lucas, what'd you do today? Oh, school. I go, Mary, what did you do today? She's like, oh, I went to the gym and I did this and I did that. And, yeah, and I do ask the Jack questions. Says who was on the show. And that's what you do at dinner. I think I, I, we do do that at dinner. I do ask the questions, but there's really after, you know, after being with somebody for close to 20 years, it's pretty much the same monotonous routine. So I always ask, and we, we certainly share a lot of things together and we talk about our friends and things that's going are that are going on, but 
I mean, you so know. the question is, could you pull off a Ponzi scheme with your wife not knowing about it? No, I couldn't. Not with her. No, you know, uh, she's well aware of my schedule. She does. She 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 uh, she puts my schedule together as far as the well. In this case, it wasn't it wasn't Bernie made our schedule. He had a regular schedule. It's just what he was doing while he was there. That's right. I certainly couldn't pull it off. No. We're certainly in, in tune and in touch with each other, as as far as I know. <laughs> hey, Ronnie, I, think, I, I see you over there. Um, are you doing Good Day LA or what? I don't know. Where did this come from? Month Fan Network. What, what do you mean? A guy tweeted that, hey, Ronnie should do this Good Day This guy runs LA? a thing called Month Fan Network, all promotion about Ronnie Mund. <laughs> what does hey, that mean, though? It's like a website? Is or, this, is no, this a, on Twitter. Is right. this officially sanctioned by you? or I don't give... I, hey, listen, I don't give a shit what he does. He puts shit up all... No, what are you, it, it what, are you, what are you talking about money? What are you, what are you right away everything's for money with you? What are you the funny thing about? is, when Ronnie says he doesn't give a shit, in his world, that is officially sanctioned. Yeah, are you okay <laughs> with it, though? It's it's so stupid. The no, stuff, cool. some of the stuff he puts up it? though. Well, it's on my page, so I, I see it. Well, what are some of the other things like, he thinks you should do? Like here's some of the, like I could get on there right now probably because he I'm sure he heard that you know he was mentioned on the show. There'll be like ten in a row of what? Um, hey Leonardo DiCaprio, put Ronnie Mund in your next movie. Hey Donald Trump. Make Ronnie Mund the judge at the Miss America pageant. All right, so he's spreading the word. Hey uh, NASCAR. He makes it Ronnie a grand marshal at your next race. You know, shit like so, that. So, so he said, hey, Jillian, put Ronnie on. Right. So, in other words, you're not booked He's at all. pretty much booked. No. Oh, okay. But no, you, I'm not but, booked. But you are booked to walk the red carpet. Oh, that's that. Yeah, that's got nothing to do with him. And what is that? You're walking the red carpet for Fox, you said? Yeah, for UFC. The launch of UFC on Fox, November 12th. And they're flying to first class? Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, cool. Is it because, yeah. like, you have another thing coming yeah, up? Yeah, I, got or something go I have something going on with them. And uh, the, the guy who... Who's putting the UFC thing together is also the guy a who's part of putting that my thing. thing. This is cool. Like this is like a soft launch of Ronnie. Yeah, like Ronnie's coming here, but not promoting anything, but just people get to know Ronnie for when he's got his big gig. Need to be seen on the right. red carpet. So right. what's what's your plan? As far as what? You're just gonna stroll down. You gotta stroll have a game, down? You gotta have a game plan going in. What kind of game plan? I just walk and do the usual. Me, Gary, you're a red carpet veteran. What advice can you give uh, yeah, Ronnie? Give me some advice. Usually, when you're on the red carpet, they're well. Usually, they're asking about the show, so just be ready for questions. I always try to figure out what I'm, how I'm going to handle anything I don't want to talk about. Such I'll as just, I'll tell, just tell him the fuck. Like when, when Howard's <laughs> when Howard's contract was up, and I went to I went to uh, that the McCarthy. I was going to say your plan for the red carpet is to tell him the fuck off. I don't well, know if I don't that. like what they're asking me, no, I won't say it. No, like, you know. No, nah, I'm only kidding. Well, that's got to be exciting going yeah, getting flown out to L.A., walking yeah, a red carpet. Yeah, it's exciting. I'm I'm all hyped up about it. Are you are you bringing your girlfriend? No, she can't go. She's got to work. Don't you think? I can't see Jillian not having him. I know there are two other people and others in decision making process. Oh, and he put he put up one also that I should be on Jimmy Kimmel. You know, hey Jimmy, he's coming out to L.A. You should put him on the show. You know, like, <laughs> Jimmy could probably work you into a bit, but yeah. I don't think he I don't think he could book you as a guest. Yeah. I think that believe it or not, Good Day L.A. They have like authors and 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 actors on, and I know Jillian could do eight minutes with Ronnie in her sleep, but I don't know if she could talk the rest of the people, the producers, to, into putting you on. Right. Yeah. Hey, you got any other plans while you're out there? I'm going to see some friends because uh, mostly I got just one thing going on, and then the UFC thing. So I'm getting out there on Thursday, so I'll have some free time and see some friends out there. Well, good luck with that. Yeah, thanks. Hey, it's Gary Delabate. On Tuesday's wrap up show, we talked to Benji. Because uh, Benji brought in his new friend, this girl that he's in love with, that wanted to perform. So we talked about how wacky Benji was acting. He couldn't eat breakfast. He hung around all day doing her sound check. Uh, then we all tried to give advice. And J.D. even stepped in to give advice on how not to be a friend to a girl. Here's what happened. We've got plenty to talk about. Elisa Giordano, we got to finally meet after a lot of hype from Benji. And there's very strong reaction. Some people feel that she's using him. Some people feel that Benji knows this and doesn't care. And everyone thinks he's holding out the banger, except Benji, who says that right. that's not necessarily the case. But, Gary, it's pretty obvious that that is the case, don't you think? He's just smitten. I mean, he, there's, there's... He, he doesn't see it. And we've all been in that position. But he's like, no, no, no. Even if, you know, she never sleeps with me, this is somebody I could be around with the rest of my life. But I think we all sort of know in a year... She'll be gone. She'll be with the chicken Brit to the Christmas party, you know, wherever that, wherever she ended up. That is who is the greatest person ever, and really a sweet girl, and we're gonna be friends forever. But will they remain friends? And the I ask that because Marianne, who's been calling it all the time lately, his friend Marianne, they're still friends, and Benji's kind of went through this period with her. I like that Marianne calls him, by the way, because 
we get nothing out of Benji. So she tells us what's going on, and I love like when book her in the cat suit. <laughs> yeah, well, not only that, that was funny too. But even like saying like you know how Benji used to always talk sex, talk to her. Benji wanted to have sex with her, I, which of course we know because we're men. Now, how cra- and Will? Maybe you should come down to talk about this, or Jason. How crazed was Benji leading up to this? Oh my god, appearance. Oh, here's here's a good one. Doug comes to me, Doug Goodstein from TV, and he says. We order Benji's breakfast every morning. He's never missed breakfast ever. He didn't come in until after she was done to get his breakfast because he was too nervous to eat. Ugh. I know Will said that he had sent some notes about her, which makes sense doing the research, but he was he was sending out yesterday. He sent out a whole bunch of links to her songs and videos. Got that. Then, um, then he was hanging around here doing her sound check. Then uh-huh. he was walking her around the station, went on Jenny Hutt's show to promote that she was going to be on this show, which, you know, again, I said... I don't know whether Jenny Hutt has, you know, five listeners or five million. It doesn't matter. He got to throw her in front of a microphone, and that looks really important. Is the payoff going to be there, though, for him? He got her. He did all that. He got her on Howard's show. She got to play a couple of songs. The interview went well. Will he close? You know, the thing is, I've been down this road a couple of times, and I'd say, you know, mostly it doesn't work. But every once in a while, you get somebody on an off night, you know, they're, they're vulnerable and maybe had a little bit to drink and they get to the sort of like, you know, you're a good guy. Maybe you're you saying a, a fuck of convenience. Well, they give it a try because they really do like you as a person. And then it's just ugly for everybody. You know, it's just, <laughs> it's just they realize they don't like you. Now they fucked you. How do they get out of your life? It's just it's uncomfortable for all of us. Now, Will Murray, I saw you trying to research this guest yesterday and. Benji wouldn't leave your side, it seemed, like all afternoon. <laughs> I know. Typical Benji. Typical Benji is the one time you actually want to talk to him, he's not here, right? Oh, I know. We're waiting for him. Uh, yeah, he's just, uh, <clears throat> he was a pain in the ass with the notes. Um, <laughs> you know, he had to constantly over, you know, look over my shoulder, make sure everything was explained the way he wanted it. He was very worried about how she'd be perceived on the show and actually how he would be perceived on the show. What do you mean by how he would be perceived? Well, the the whole ambient story that she told a little bit today, he didn't want that to seem like he was some kind of like uh, date, date raper. Yeah, which I think he is a little bit. <laughs> so he was going out on, she was going out on the dates, and he was just tagging along, right, with the yeah, ambient. Yeah, and then feeding and... her drugs before the date. As well. <laughs> and by the way, you know, Robin Robin brought this up. She said that that was like what Nixon used to do. When Nixon Nixon met his wife, who wasn't his wife, he met her in college, and he was madly in love with her, the way Benji is. And so he used to show for her on her dates, like drive her to a date to just figure he'd hang around. Again, this is the whole Al Roker thing. But to me, the vision of Benji three tables away on her date <laughs> is super creepy. Yeah, the whole thing was bizarre. Jason. Passing out, by the way. <laughs> and her, too, because yeah, she'd been drugged. Again, I, I think we kind of flew past that. I knew I know she's an adult, and Benji didn't force anything on her, but the fact that he was recommending she take drugs, either before her date or before her appearance on the show, is so creepy and who had the ambient was it just lying around like i don't know to me that was a fascinating part of the story but clearly they're both crazy and that's why uh you can make fun of benji all you want but a girl that would let benji sit three tables away while she's on the date is equally as crazy as benji is for doing it so i don't know what is going on over there so you don't think she's just a happy fun loving spirit and they connected and they're skyping and there was nothing fun loving that came off i mean she was great though i'm not putting her down she was a very, she was good on the show and she was a performer but no she didn't come off like a happy fun loving person to me at all yeah she doesn't seem like a traveling party yeah yeah she seemed kind of like a downer to be honest and didn't uh. see, and I, I wouldn't exactly describe her as asexual either no 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 she's very sexual story no, no, she's very. I mean, but the, another one of her great lines today was uh, when I told the story about how she went to Rick's and Ronnie said that she'd been at Rick's a bunch of times and she goes, Oh, yeah, they have great lobster. Like, you can't get lobster anywhere else in New York City but Rick's. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Ben. Oh, by the way, have you ever had bad lobster? <laughs> exactly. It's well, lobster. By the way, for everyone, we are fully in the vortex, I, I'm, but I think it <laughs> we makes started sense without you. to go That's there. Okay. I, I don't mind. Nobody. How did you feel That's after? What he wants. So she finally, <laughs> so she finally came in. We all got to meet her. She got to perform. But I thought I heard you say you felt a little sad after this was all over today. Uh, yeah, I go, I go back and forth on it. You know, on like, because uh, like, like I said on the show, sometimes it's just so much fun to be around her, and sometimes it does get a little sad. So you know, there was a lot going on. There Plus, th- I was really tired. Like we didn't get a lot. But of also, I mean, uh, to be a little mean, like you might have felt sad because you've now gone to the pinnacle of where she can use you. Uh, that's Meaning, you. I mean, where do you go from here? No, I, I, I listen. 
it's it's this this it's been the same way for weeks and you know no but this was sort of a build up I, I understand where Jace is coming like this was a big thing like this was the kind of thing where you'd no. hope after you get on hope, maybe even not today maybe tonight yeah. she goes wow I don't so, have this any, doesn't get you late I don't have no I don't have any fantasy of of that happening now I, I, I listen I'm fat now if I was if I met a girl as heavy as me but had a, as, as good looking face as me I would say look you got to lose weight <laughs> do you think if you lost that weight <laughs> Like you're saying, and you're in your ideal shape. Do you think that would make a difference? Because it sounded to me like today, yeah. it's, it's not going to happen with oh, her. All right. Well, I, I, I actually tweeted this recently. The great thing about being fat is you always have hope. You know? But do you Once think it's... I lose all the weight and there's this... Like, but do you think it's, it's, like, it's only a weight that. thing? That's the only thing between you and her? I think... No. I, I don't know. I don't know. I really no. don't. How Howard based asked on... point blank, would you bang Benji? Right. And she didn't say no, right. but she gave the well. If I, there no, was I a nuclear she, war, kind of like she was giving the excuses, that, she like, the being nice answer. Yeah, Do you think that would really work. Well, it seemed like you got the sort of not that good looking, but a great personality. No, I know. Right? Like I knew when I pitched that as a uh, you know, hey, to have her on. Um, I, I was just talk, talking to Greg about this. Like, there's three things going on. One, yeah, did I want to get her on the show and like help my friend out and impress her? Absolutely. Did I want and get her music out there? Um, and I and. Uh, but I thought the premise of, is she saying she's asexual? I knew she might have been just being nice to me. Or, or I thought there, it, it was, you, you it wanted was interesting to, either way. No, like, no, if she's I, really asexual, that's interesting. No, that's what you really wanted to do was smoke out the truth. Well, <laughs> seriously, I know. I mean, maybe you maybe wanted to get, but, you wanted to get, put her on the spot to get to the truth to say, <laughs> is she asexual or is she just not interested no, in you? No, but I thought either way it makes it a real uh, interesting. Uh, to kinda, you, especially. Yeah. Yeah, um, but it started to come out in the last couple of weeks anyway. So do you look at her any differently after today? Um, I'm I'm very impressed by her because I know she's as great as a performer she is, as talented as she is. She hasn't she's hardly done any like solo radio on herself herself. Well, solo is herself, but like, and I know she was incredible. You should just stop. Well, no, because I, you're you're really listen, hurting yourself. I mean, no, I get that, and like I said, like I, I don't, I don't think she will meet someone better than me. I don't, I don't think that she'll meet someone better than me. I had this conversation. No, with, no, I had no, this conversation with her during matter. the break. I don't mean better than. I, I'm saying that will make her happy. She won't meet. She'll be happy. Like have better emotional. She won't meet delusion. somebody. But that, maybe, that, maybe I'm wrong. Then maybe. why is it she saying, Benji? You know what? You're the love of my life. We yeah. should be together forever, always. I'll never because, find anything better because she's not at that point, and I'm, it might not happen. I I agree that, and I might. I, I've said repeatedly, I might say, you know what? It is. It does hurt me too much to see someone I really like this way, and to, but. You know, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I gotta we'll say, what I really like the angle you were taking for like, getting her drugged up and then uh, moving forward. So I would suggest, uh, unlike JD, is either get more or better drugs. All right. Where do, where do you think this? Will, like, it's a year from now. Will you be friends? Will we have never not heard of her for six months? Where do you think it'll all be? Will you have I your don't beard? know. I could see like like I don't know. I, I she's the kind of person I could see. If it doesn't work out, like maybe she, I, I like her. I like her a lot. So maybe it's someone I want my life, all my life. And we, you know, so I don't know. JD, you've been the victim, the friend victim, right? With some chicks? Yeah. Like, and, and, have and you remained sort of I'm, recently? And yeah, it, I, you have to just, it took a little while, but you got to have to cut the cord. Yeah, but if people. Because it'll kill you. But JD, like I went through some major anxiety over someone and it's just like, ugh. It wasn't even worth it. But when well, people were telling you, you know what, it's it ain't gonna happen. It's time to move on. You you wouldn't listen. Uh, well, kinda. Um, I, there was a, there were always the thoughts of of you know maybe there's a chance, but then you know. JD, are, just I 
first of all, I think every guy has gone through this, and I'm assuming you're talking about. Uh, I can't remember. It's over the A. a- Ash. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Was someone you don't even know. Okay, Ashley right, Madison. <laughs> <laughs> you know her? Uh. Yeah, um. Anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I. You were about to say something. But have you have you ever had this with somebody and remain friends with them? Um. Not really. No. Once once a girl isn't into me, uh, like you know, attracted to me or whatever, you know, it's hard. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Uh, it, it's it's hard for me to be just friends with them. You know what I mean. Same here. It's not. Or sometimes it is, and sometimes it's not. You know. Aren't you worried about if something does happen romantically, it's going to destroy everything you built? In terms what do you of mean? Your, because you could be it's us if we get together romantically. It's like a bad John Hughes movie, but you could be friends with them for a very long time. Then that moment happens. Then all of a sudden, it, it just didn't live up to expectations. That's, that's always that's possible. I mean, but you know, I'm, I'm not looking for a guarantee. You know. I, uh, I I was back there in the newsroom, John, and um, uh, Al, who's uh, editing up the news stories today for us, uh, told me an interesting story that uh, when Benji did the hurricane show, uh, where he was doing a one-hour show during uh, Hurricane Irene, I think, he had asked Al to upload uh, 20 songs <laughs> of this girl into profit <laughs> to play throughout the show. I was gonna, she was going to be one of the people I interviewed today to say they couldn't get her on the phone. Now, are you so I sat like, there and had to upload 20 well, they, songs. No, they time. asked me, they said, give us every single thing you want to upload that might could possibly be. Because they also told me when I did the Hurricane show, it could be all night. So he skipped the Village of Anthology. No, I also, <laughs> did, I also did, uh, I also had several uh, Daniel Johnson songs. I tried to get a Who's Kenny jo- Roby song Who's about Daniel a hurricane. Johnson? Another, guy. Johnson. Another guy won't bang him. Yeah. Well, don't say that so quickly. Don't say that so quickly. <laughs> hey, Fred, Benji, real, that one question real quick. Uh, at your peak... Do you think you like Marianne more than you like, uh, what's her name now, Elisa? It's so hard to, no, nah, I don't think so. Does it bum you out that Marianne? I do love Marianne. Does it bum you out that Marianne calls in? Cause I, you yeah, look, it pissed me off. I mean, I love her, and Marianne is one of my closest friends, and we're one of my best friends. But I don't like this, like, you know, I, I don't like, it's, it's, you don't need to tell people, like, you know, just give it up, give it up. I don't believe in telling people give up something. I can say, like, hey, you know what? I think it might lead you to be getting hurt. I might, But just drop it. It's never going to happen. I was, I, hate- I was asking more about the stuff she, because you don't tell us anything. So she oh. tells us the stuff about you. Like what? Like that you used to try to talk dirty to her and what your moves yeah, were she, and her and all that stuff. We, we Listen, Marianne and I joke around a lot. <laughs> Did Bob Am And what were you doing yesterday? I mean, you were all over the place with this. I know Will said he was trying to get you for a pre-interview. He really... Yeah. I mean, you were in his hair. You did yeah. a show last night. Like, you're, are you playing up the moment, or are you just? No, I, 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 like Gary. There was a build up to this, and and we did. You know, there was a lot. Of, she did like 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 rehearsal and stuff, and she and you know there was. What, what it's was like Clive one? Davis. <laughs> oh. yeah, it going, like, Sounds like a hit, sweetheart. <laughs> I was there for the rehearsal. I was cool. Benji was videotaping it and like asking oh people to come in to watch. And uh, well, she said because she felt better because yeah. she was very nervous about performing, so she wanted different people to. Like, you know, strangers just to be there. Do you think there's a chance that she might be using you for all of this? No, I, I don't. I don't think, I don't think, I think when I initially talked to her about getting on, she was like, no, 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 it, you know, don't, don't try to well, do it. Smart. So that brings a question that was a big debate in the back office. I think, is I think the, she is, enjoys it, it if, especially. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. Is the onus on her to cut it and say, listen, I'm not going to bang you? Or is the onus on Benji to recognize that it may not happen? She said that. So so the so she's done her onus. She really hasn't though. She didn't say no. She's to left it. the door ajar. So ever so slightly. <laughs> yeah. If she if no, she, she w- really has though, and that's that's the tough part. Oh, like a sheet of paper will fit through. Well, that's maybe. exactly it. But yeah. uh, but a sheet of paper is enough when you feel like the way you that's, do. Yeah, that's if, when you're his size. <laughs> <laughs> if she was playing you, and I'm not saying that she is, but if she was, she's playing you perfectly. Okay. But I, I mean, that, that, but I don't th- you know I don't think so. I think she has a, a really good heart. I think that as long like if she if she told you there is zero percent possibility you and I will ever sleep together, and then you continue to do nice stuff for her, I think okay that's that's not her fault anymore. But I kind of agree with Gary. She left the door open, and in a way, it's it's definitely using you. And even if she's not doing it to be malicious, it's still using. I think you guys are all cynics. I think that tends to be a lot of people are cynics. I'm not as cynical about you're a romantic pussy fog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> On Wednesday's wrap-up show, two of our favorite people were here, Ronnie Mund and J.D. Harmeyer. And Ronnie spoke about how you get permission to chain a guest because he was worried about Lou Bellera and Joey Buttafuoco possibly getting into it. So we heard some Ronnie logic, and then right after that, J.D. talked about the email he sent to Howard, which said, spoiler alert, and had the spoiler in the subject. Two great minds, 
all for you. Ronnie, with uh, Lou and and Joey coming in, a lot of the convert they got along very well. But uh, Gary, you should describe the setup because there was a whole you know reconfiguration of the studio, and one was isolated, and all a right. lot went into it. I'll, I'll I'll talk about that, and then I'll talk about the conversation that Ronnie and I had yesterday, how it all led to this. But basically, what went on was Howard was very fearful that. Um, there was going to be an altercation. And Ronnie and I had spoken yesterday morning. I went to Ronnie. I said, you got extra guys tomorrow, right? He goes, yeah, absolutely, because we knew something could happen. So I get a phone call from Ronnie at like one. Uh, I guess Howard called me when I was down with Tim, and I tried to call Howard back. I couldn't get him. Ronnie called me. Howard's very nervous about what's going to go on. And then Ronnie said something about a ball and a chain, which I didn't understand, which in all fairness, Howard must have said to him. And, and in my mind, I'm thinking like, Handcuffs and balls and chip. We're like we can't do that. No, That's does like, does Ronnie have a security or police type of voice or manner when he's talking? Like when he's no, up these no, plans? no. We were just talking. Ronnie and I talk about this. Like how are you going to handle this? How are you going to handle that? So Ronnie had informed me because Howard had gone to the gym, and Ronnie said uh, he called me. He's worried about tomorrow. He talked about maybe handcuffing them or putting them a ball chain. <laughs> but I called the people that work here, and it can't happen. You know, et cetera, et cetera. So I just sort of let it go by because I knew. It was. It didn't seem. It was an idea that came and went. Right. And then I said to Ronnie, "We had done this twice before." I said, "Why don't we put one guy in Robin's studio? That way, your guys can block the door either way. Him coming out or Joey going in." And that ended up being Lou. Right. We put Lou in there and put one guy in the couch, and so everybody liked that idea. Now, the, I'm trying to think who the other people. Um, who's the uh, the black wrestler? I think his name was Booker T, mm-hmm. and I think somebody interviewed him. And gave him a quiz, and he did not come across looking very bright, and he was fucking angry. Yeah. And so we put him in the booth. That's one I remember. And I think we did it one other time. Oh, the KKK guy. Which guy? Yeah, Daniel Carver for the Carver That was the Rose. Exact him, though. That was the Rose. Right. He was in there. But, Ronnie, what was your plan, and did you leave a message like that for Howard? No. So what did you tell him? No. We talked in the car, and he, he said that he was nervous about, you know, he didn't want any problems. So, so I said, well, you know, we're bringing extra guys in. And he goes, well, maybe we should chain them to the couch and one, and one to the chair or handcuff one or whatever. And I said, I don't think that'll work, but I'll, I'll check into it. So I checked into it with a couple of people here that work here, uh, security people. And, you know, it, it's you can't do that unless you get permission. How many people did you check with? W- well, two different people. Okay. I, that, and, and did you... Did you think Howard was being, like, dead serious? I want them chained. I want them handcuffed. He wanted something to make sure that they wouldn't get at each other. But that's not the issue. Well, what is what? There wasn't an issue. No, no, I don't think that was Howard's point. Howard's point was, did you think he was asking for you to do it without their permission? No. How can you do it without their permission? But you were saying we can't do it without their permission. Right. Well, that's what... So then we could have done it with their permission. Yeah, you could have, yeah. So then why would you say to Howard, we can't do it without their permission if you didn't think he was asking that? Benji. I actually know what he's saying. Uh, he's saying that, that you shouldn't have got, you, he, What Benji's saying is you should have called Howard back and said, we can do this. I did say but that. But we're going to have to get their permission and they that. may not give it. I did it. say that. We can, if we got them either written or them telling on camera, you know, beforehand, like we do when we get the IDs from girls and stuff like that, that... We give up. I give my permission to be handcuffed into a chair. But did you ever a- assume that Howard was going to want to do it without their permission? No. So I, normally you don't bring up something like that unless unless you think. Why wouldn't you bring it up? Did why you, why why would you say also like um, you why know, we, is it so, we, we why can't do you force have feed to them. pick it every day? No, no, why I, is I it think such it's a, interesting? What? I'm not trying to be mean about it. I no, but I don't understand why what the, what the problem is here with you with this. What what is the problem? I, I swear it's not a problem. It's just, I find it interesting. Okay, it's interesting, to... but I told him every scenario of it, and that's why he, you know, he said I left this long message. What was every scenario? The, the scenario was either you could handcuff them with their permission, or you can't handcuff them with, unless they're under arrest. <laughs> See, that's where it gets funny because <laughs> I think we all know that we're, nobody's going to handcuff them without their permission. Well, no, you you can't just have them walk in and say, "Hey, listen, man, uh, we he, we think there's going to be a problem here. We're going to handcuff you." No, I you 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 could have them walk in and say, "We think there's going to be a problem here. We were thinking about it. it. Might be funny if we handcuff you. Do you, are, do you are you cool for that?" Yeah, right. But 
They didn't. They weren't cool about doing that here. How do you know? Oh, who the, was? oh that's it. Let's get to that. Who wasn't cool about the ser- it? The serious people. They didn't like the idea so of the, handcuffing the, the, people. Then we couldn't do handcuff people at all if we had their permission. But hold on, But you're saying two different things. Either no, no. Either the serious guys told they you no. They weren't happy with it either way. But it can be done if you have their permission. So the the hand- but they weren't happy about it. What can I? What? Wait. So the handcuffs. How much more can I say? Wait, they weren't happy about it here. Okay. So I get the hand. That. So the handcuffs were out. But what about the chains? No, the same difference, John. Chains, handcuffs, the same thing. All right. So after you found this out, what was the next plan? Did you design the layout? No, Gary. Or- Gary, I spoke to Gary. Gary said, "We've done this before. What if we do it this way?" And I said, if there's a problem with that, call me back and we'll try and work something else out. I never heard from him again, so I assumed everything was fine. When When I came in this morning, that was the plan. When you came into the studio later, when Howard was talking about it, you told Howard he was coming all over you. (laughs) Where did that come from? Um, Well, right, you know, he jumped all over me saying I was talking like a cop and all. I left him a message. I did the right thing. I told him what, you know, he likes to know what's going on. I told him what was going on. Right, but you didn't say you're breaking my balls. You said you're coming all over me, and that seemed like an odd choice of words, I thought. I don't do it. Why, John? Why? why, why? <laughs> you can answer that question, he Gary. Breaking my, he's breaking my balls no matter what. If I do the right thing, it's not good. If I do the wrong thing, it's not good. You know, what can I say? Joe in Pennsylvania, you're on the wrap-up show. Okay, I'll tell you where the problem is, Ronnie. It, it, it's If this were a trip you were planning out to California to do some Fox TV show, you'd have been a lot more tenacious. You'd have checked into a lot more sources. You'd have gotten it done. You're getting lazy. Bottom line. Yeah, okay, fine. What a, yeah, how am I lazy? We got it done. You didn't get it done the way Howard wanted to. You said no right away. I did that not kind of say no it. right away. You're a negative I guy. said I would it's check it. And you're a fucking asshole, okay? You don't know what the hell you're talking about. Be careful. You're going to break a hip. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> All right, thanks for chiming in there, Joe. As it turned out, it was a pretty normal conversation that, that Lou and Joey had, right? There yeah, was, was n- none of that. Yeah, but you don't know what's going to happen. How do you know what's going to happen? Yeah, there was a whole weird thing that started out right from the beginning where I went out to the hallway to talk to Joey, and he goes, Hey, Gary, thanks for not returning my phone call two Thanksgivings ago. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I've spoken to Joey probably four times in the last year and a half. I, I'm probably one of the few people in any business, show business or otherwise, that calls him back pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. So he seemed to have some uh, some bug about me, you know, the whole thing. So we said, he said, can I bring my wife in? And I said, I don't think that works. Why don't you bring her into the green room? And then you'll go in. And then if Howard wants to call for you know, call for in. And he said, Okay. And then when I walked out to get him, Howard goes, bring them in. Joey goes, bring my wife in. And I said, no, you're not, Joey. And he goes, yeah, that's what I'm doing. And I said, Joey, we just talked about this 20 minutes ago. No, we didn't. Yeah, we did, Joey. We just talked about it. Well, I changed my mind. I go, I know. I changed mine as well. She can't come in. And it got, so this is, of course, while I'm walking her in. So it got to be, he was very odd today. He was in this very odd and contentious mood. And then I guess I was the brunt. I didn't hear it. But I guess I was uh, the brunt of Gary's keeping me off the show. Where are you going, J.D.? JD, where are you going? You why are you writing it on paper? Why don't you speak into the microphone? It was something that we already covered, actually. So what? It was a good point though, JD made. Well, it's, look, speak I won't, up. Ronnie. I won't say. Speak up, man. I won't, I won't say it was JD because I didn't have this conversation with him. But some people said that when you went and said you're coming all over me, you were trying <laughs> to create another catch. No, I wasn't. <laughs> oh God. It was very odd, Ronnie. Yeah, it was very, very odd. odd. Yeah. Okay. Like your catchphrase yesterday. My catchphrase yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Uh, pussy fog. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, you don't hear me using pussy fog, do you? <laughs> you don't hear me using coming all over me Yeah, either, you do did, you? actually. I used it once today. That's it. <laughs> okay. That's right. That's all, right? all That's all we need is one. All right. Don't come in and write it on paper. Speak into I the didn't microphone. I want to bring something That's what they call it, the rapper show. You talk li- here. Hold on. I hadn't I had. I know you can't talk good. I hadn't been listening, and I didn't want to bring something up that had already been uh, discussed already. I was having respect for the show. Unlike you, Why? Just since, when bring... do you, since when do you have respect for the show? I have respect for everything I'm involved in. Good. Why did you email a spoiler alert to Howard that had the spoiler in the title? <laughs> that is amusing. <laughs> I'd love to hear this explanation. I, there was a mention, Arquette mentioned Howard on <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel. And I just uh, I forwarded in the message. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I assumed he had already seen Arquette had gotten kicked off. 
So I just put a spoiler alert. Our cat was kicked off last night. But what? Are, <laughs> but why would you assume it? Because you don't know that our cat's kicked off till like nine fifty eight, right? Yeah. Well, I assumed he like had he woke up early enough or tried to find out or something. Because it would I, most people would have been spoiler alert. Don't read this if you don't want to know who got kicked off Dance with the Stars last night. Either, he's going to see either way. He's going to see who mentioned him on. Kimmel. No, but if you said what I just said, then he wouldn't do that. No. Uh, well, but, I mean, yeah, but Gary's saying, like, you would just say, spoiler alert, um, the results of Dancing with the Stars listen, vote is Either is way, if I put spoiler alert or not, it would have been spoiled because he no, would have seen that no, our cat he didn't want had no, he wouldn't have, he, No, no, he wouldn't have. Oh, if you said spoiler alert, don't open if you. Ngắm nhìn biển rộng bao la, một màu xanh biếc cho ta say lòng. Lắng nghe sóng vỗ di dâm, như lời du thua ta nằm trong nỗi. Ngắm nhìn mây lượn lờ trôi, bồng bềnh là lướt như thời đôi mươi. Nắng vàng như miệng ai cười. Cho hoa đùa đó Cho người thêm xuân Ngắm màu xanh thẫm nuôi 